but then you will not speak if the minister speaks. Yeah, yeah, of course.
need to move, if you need to move a chair, yeah. and put yourself somewhere. That's fine. Like, yeah. Just not, just not in the front. Yeah. But otherwise, if you need to.
We're starting in two minutes. Could you please take your seat? Thank you. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, I think we can start now. Mm -hmm. Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, distinguished experts, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to this very first high level session of the Africa e commerce week 2018. One day you can say, I was there, I was part of it. My name is Daniela zehentner Kapell, and I'm head of the trade division of the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. I'm very honored to moderate this session. This session will take a look at key findings from the rapid e-trade readiness assessments recently completed by UNCTAD in Africa and focuses on practical steps that national governments can take with the support of donor agencies, development banks, and international organizations. As a quick reminder, rapid e-readiness assessments for least developed country initiative of UNCTAD was launched in 2016 and since 2017. Assessments have been carried out in 15 countries including seven in Africa, in Burkina Faso, Liberia, Madagascar, Senegal, Togo, Uganda, and Zambia. And additional assessments are on the way in Benin, Lesotho, Malawi, Mali, Tanzania, and Niger. The rapid e-trade readiness assessments examine the existing situation in a country in seven areas highlighted by the E-Trade for All initiative. These are e-commerce strategies, ICT infrastructure and services, payment solutions for e-commerce, trade logistics, legal, legal and regulatory frameworks, skills development, and financing solutions for e-commerce. In this opening session, we have distinguished guests from different stakeholder groups involved in the e-readiness assessments, governments, agencies, and private sector. Today, UNCTAD is launching three new assessments for Madagascar, Uganda, and Zambia. Among the distinguished panelists, the representatives of three countries will share their experience and ideas, especially on how to move forward with the e-commerce agenda at national level and to turn the recommendations contained in the assessments into action. For, this, for the discussion, I encourage you all to focus on practical steps that need to be taken by the different stakeholders, for instance, African governments, donor agencies, development banks, international organization, the private sector to this end. So before turning to the distinguished guests, we are privileged today to have with us Dr. Kitui, Secretary General of UNCTAD, as well as several E-Trade for All partner agencies who will deliver keynote addresses. Dr. Kitui, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Daniela. Distinguished members of the panel, many of whom are uh, very good friends and um, bidding you welcome. Bishar, Arancha, Vera, um, I, I know Annette, I wanted to call her Baganda name. Oh. 
the, the, the entire, apart from you and the, the head of the UN Economic Commission for Africa, Vera Songwe, these are members of the Geneva community and welcome away from the weather of Geneva. Honorable ministers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I convinced my staff that we experiment with the first e-commerce event held outside Geneva, it was not just because of the exponential growth of attention to e-commerce week that we host every year in Geneva, but because of a sense of urgency that much of Africa is being left out of this discourse and that we have to find concrete ways in which we can engage. Not just engage that we are talking together, but that we share a sense of purposefulness. We as an organization had the privilege to host the meeting at which E-Trade for All initiative was launched formally at Anctad 14 in Nairobi in the year 2016. This allowed us to roll out the E-Trade Preparedness Studies, which has been a phenomenal tool, a diagnostic tool for LDCs on where they are, how far they have come. As we speak now, we have completed 15 LDC readiness studies, seven of which have been in Africa, we have in the pipeline, as mentioned, quite a few others waiting to, to come out. And I'm very, very happy that we have a distinct product that we can present during this meeting in Nairobi. I want from the outset to express our appreciation to our donors and partners who have made it possible for our teams to work together with the different governments on this trade readiness studies. For the seven studies in Africa particularly, I want to express our appreciation, Daniela, to the government of Germany for having sponsored six of the seven studies and the government of Sweden for sponsoring the other. We have a pipeline of more LDCs coming on stream and even increasingly non-LDCs who are seeing the value of identifying your gaps in infrastructure, in skills, in uh, financing, you had uh, gaps in uh, privacy laws, payment system, logistics, that they want this done for them. And we're very happy that we're engaging in a number of these already. Already, as we look at the growing body of evidence on the basis of the studies we've done, we start identifying some key areas in the different countries where concerted action both by the state and by partners is necessary. As we expand and continue the program, we want to pay attention to the learning experience from those concrete examples. During this meeting, as you've been told, we're going to launch the studies of Madagascar, Uganda, and Zambia. In our assessment, for example, in the Uganda case, we are making recommendations for the establishment of a multi-stakeholder task force on e-commerce to create common understanding of the opportunities and the challenges and seek to improve public-private partnership and coordination in growing the ecosystem for the digital economy in Uganda. Similarly, in Zambia, we have recommendations for accelerating an existing national dis addressing and post code, post postal code project without an address to which a product is delivered. It's ridiculous to say we want to order products online. And we're very glad that Zambia has uh, already taken more than 60,000 household numbers and uh, street registration inspired by this program. It will deliver more gains than just the e-commerce. In Madagascar, a country where only 6% of the population currently uses the internet, and with very substantial trade bottlenecks, preventing deeper development of uh, e-commerce, we are looking at uniquely what are the core areas from which you have to start. A legal framework, for example, has been put in place to support e-commerce. and. A dedicated strategy on e-commerce is needed and we are providing the backup to government as it looks to implement this. Faced with the current global trade challenges, many countries are moving fast into the digital and addressing challenges and opportunities on the digital landscape. But it is critically important that the ministries see their responsibility as not only mobilizing resources, 
but hosting dialogue with the different players within their countries and looking at best practices among their neighbors. We are very glad that in the next, in the coming period, we'll complete the eight ongoing studies of Benin, Lesotho, Malawi, Mali, Niger, and Tanzania. And after, as I mentioned, we're already making some steps to get out of uh, the LDC community to other countries, both in Africa and the rest of the world. For example, in February, we'll, beginning, we'll be beginning the first enhanced e-trade readiness assessment of Iraq, financially supported by the Islamic Trade Finance Corporation. Uh, early this year, we completed an ambitious national strategy of Egypt which I find very, very instructive for two things. The government of Egypt came to us and said, we have an ambition to be the e-commerce leader in Africa in the next five years. That is where we want to go. We want you to walk with us the path of how to get there. A product of this was a national e-commerce strategy that has been completed and embraced by the government of Egypt, funded by MasterCard. Last week, I had a meeting with the Prime Minister Hariri, Saad Hariri of Lebanon, where we have just completed a national science, technology, and innovation policy review. And the first thing he said is, before you leave my office, I want you to confirm that you are coming to help us do a national strategy on e-commerce. The appetite is growing, but the laggards are primarily on this continent. We share a challenge, and I hope that in the course of this meeting, in listening to senior government officers, leaders from the international community, passionate supporters of the enabling possibilities of the digital economy for the hearkening the call, leaving no one behind, will help us grow a sense of urgency and a sense that we have to lock our steps not only as we grow e-commerce at home, but as we grow cross-border e-commerce between African countries and between Africa and the rest of the world. The final thing I'd like to say is this. The e-trade for all initiative is a first major diagnostic step that all countries that have no clear comprehensive policy on the direction to take must take. Then you can have the specific basis on which you can negotiate with donors, with investors, with makers of government policy on the priority areas of investment. But as we enter the digital space, also important, and I mentioned, it's very easy to think electronic market presence is economic progress. We must not abandon the reality that we need to build productive capacity so that electronic market presence is a possibility to sell something, not just to buy made in India and made in China but also to sell made in Africa. I thank you very much for your attention and I wish you very successful discussions. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kutui. I think it always needs people at the top um, of institutions anywhere um, to see where the where the chances are, and, and you see with, the, with all the demand that is coming, you've obviously hit the nerve of the time, so congratulations and keep going uh, in that pace. Now I'd like to turn to Dr. Vera Songer. She's uh, Executive Secretary for the United Nations Economic, sorry, yeah, Economic Commission for Africa. Um, thanks for being here and uh, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Daniela. Let me start also by saying hello to my colleagues and old friends, uh, Bichara, uh, Alessandro uh, Vitale, who is also here with us. Arancha, of course, uh, nice to see you. Really, you have brought Geneva to, to, to Nairobi. It's the weather, I suppose. Yes. Uh, uh, Annette and uh, Daniela, uh, thanks for the introduction. I think that uh, when the Secretary General called and asked uh, uh, ECA and myself to attend and come and participate in this forum, I could not but say uh, yes, because I think it's a particularly important subject and I think uh, the, the introduction that you've made and the discussions that you've been having all day probably emphasize the importance of that uh, um, for all of us. 
the digital economy is clearly an opportunity for Africa, but it cannot be, uh, we cannot, I think, take uh, full advantage of it if we do not understand what we need to do. I think that a lot of the work, the excellent work that is happening around the e-commerce is coming to sort of sit on top of what we're doing at the, uh, uh, in Addis, and we sit in Addis, so we have this uh, sort of African Union beside us, which helps. Because a lot of, I, I think, our strength around the digital economy would really come from our numbers as well, and how we can sort of collapse uh, the African economy into an economy that has the kind of power like China, and that therefore can move those goods. Digital trade or digital uh, uh, e-commerce is clearly uh, something that I think businesses across the world are benefiting from. It is now estimated to be an economy of about 15 trillion. Uh, business to customers is about $1 trillion. In Africa, e-commerce is growing quite rapidly. It's almost 40% annually. McKinsey estimates that uh, on the back of the massive mobile penetration, uh, Africa's e-commerce will grow to about 300 billion by 2025. So that's sort of, you know, the numbers are there. I think when we talk about what would SMEs do on the continent, where can they go, clearly uh, e-commerce is, is part of that answer. On the continent, we see a rise in the number of platforms that en enable online trading, OLX, Zoom in Tanzania, Jumia. Jumia, for instance, employs about 3,000 people on the continent and has partnered with some 50,000 local African companies. The, the digitization of trade provides important opportunities for both micro and small and medium enterprises, and we know that if we really want to get growth on the continent going, we need to support the small and medium enterprises. When we look at the last East Asian experience, a lot of the growth that came uh, out of East Asia came really from SMEs, and so if we want to replicate that, we need to sort of support our SMEs uh, as they grow. The e-commerce platforms are also gaining a, a much uh, online presence. I think as uh, the Secretary General just articulated, for them to gain an even better presence, we need to understand what is the right e-commerce strategy and how can we take advantage of it. Um, we see, I think, the biggest uh, e-commerce platform in the world today is Alibaba's and financial services in China. And um, I think that uh, a lot of the work that is also being done uh, with Ongted is uh, to gain and understand some of the knowledge uh, coming out of uh, 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 and financial and Alibaba. I think Alibaba is your uh, goodwill ambassador uh, for, for Ongted. So, so clearly, going in there, you have uh, Jack Ma, is, uh, uh, has, you have a very clear sense of what's going on. We at the ECA, I think, are trying to say, you know, as we do that, we, you know, two things are happening on the continent today. One of them, of course, is the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which is basically saying, you know, how do you break down borders? How do we ensure that cross-border trade works? How do we ensure that we can actually get goods that are exchanged from one place to the other? People will ask, and people have been asking me a lot, you know, the rest of the world, and as uh, was said earlier, is re-questioning the quest, uh, globalization and saying, you know, is globalization really working for everybody? And, and, and why is Africa so excited about the AFCFTA? And I say two things. I say the first is, you know, the rest of the world is already at much higher numbers of intra-continental trade. In East Asia, it's about 60-something percent. In Europe, it's almost 75 uh, percent. Let's see, the numbers may drop a little bit as the uh, uh, UK comes out of it. But, in, and in the United States, the greater United States, it's about 40 percent. We are still at 17 percent. So even if we doubled, we would not reach the next continental intra, uh, uh, intracontinental trade experience. So we still have a lot to go. So we're, we're still much more hopeful. We haven't reached the 60 percent where you start getting the kinds of tensions that you're getting uh, in Europe and the rest where actually there is more crowding out. So that's one reason why I believe that we still have a lot to get to the frontier. And then when we get to the frontier, we can start uh, having debates about whether intra-Africa trade uh, is important. But secondly, and I think even more important, is that we have done work at the ECA that shows that when Africa trades with itself, Africa adds more value, which basically means that we generate prosperity much faster. So intrinsically, it's a good idea. However, we have to make sure, and I think that this is again where e-commerce becomes a particularly important tool. A lot of the pushback around globalization has been because we have left people behind. So the whole sort of SDG mantra of leave no one behind, when we did, when we started the globalization drive, we didn't think about getting everybody with us, and so we forgot a few people who are now saying, what about us? 
And so I think that as we start our, 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 our drive towards uh, deeper and more extensive trading, we have to ensure that we bring people with us. And this is where e-commerce for us becomes an important tool because the more we can trade on these platforms, the more we can bring women, the more we can bring young people into the trading platform that hitherto was not possible. An example, and I think that uh, this is work that has been done with USAID and ECA, if you are a woman in West Africa and you try to trade across borders, you have about 25 stops where you're harassed, where you ask for payment. Yesterday was the anti-corruption day and where your goods are taken away from you. So clearly it's not possible if you're a woman small business to be able to do, even if we worked on the AFCFTA and the borders went down, the kinds of impediments to cross-border trade for small women enterprises is quite difficult. However, if we're able to get an address uh, because uh, we finalized the Ongtad e-commerce strategy, then it's very easy to order the good and have it shipped across the borders in a more secure way. So this begins to give you a sense of why we believe that e-commerce allows us to do trade in a more inclusive way and, and clearly ensure that uh, we can make it happen. The other thing that we are trying to do is work with the African Union and all our member states to ensure that we can harmonize the trading platforms. Because what we do not want to do is say that we open e-commerce platforms, but every country gets a different system, such that the systems no longer talk to each other. Then while we would have won the AFCFTA infrastructure technical borders, we would have failed on the digital borders, or we would be creating more barriers. So we are trying to work towards harmonization of the components of platforms so that we can have Algeria talk to Egypt and have Zimbabwe talk to Senegal in a way that is seamless and so women can trade equally uh, uh, across borders. So that's an important part of it. There is the second part which is the regulatory structure. I think that as we create this one big common market called the African market, 1.3 billion people, we will have a commodity that will become invaluable. It's our data. And how we use that data, how we regulate that data, how we ensure that that data is used for trade and not for, for, for security or counter security reasons is going to become particularly important. And so as we work on the e-commerce country by country micro level, we need to begin to put in place the umbrella macro regulatory framework that ensures that this can actually work well. And so that's part of what we are trying to do on the back of the CFTA uh, uh, agreement to see if we can work with our member states and the African Union uh, 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 Commissioner for Trade and Commerce, Commissioner Muchanga, but also the Commissioner for Infrastructure, the Commissioner for Peace and Security, to ensure that we can actually get this uh, forward. Now, for us to actually trade uh, uh, with each other on the continent, we need to have an ID. And today on the continent, we have about 542 million people that have no IDs, no identity. And the whole uh, 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 infrastructure of e-commerce relies on identity whether it's personal identity for people or it's uh, uh, your, your ISPs in, or for your machines or it's the, 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 the broad, broadband wave that you use, there is always an identity attached to any kind of e-commerce work. And so one of the things that we are also trying to do is ensure that we can get the whole sort of identity for Africa going as part of this e-commerce uh, discussion so that we can ensure that we bring more people into the trading sphere. We talk today a lot about informality. A lot of the informal sector is also the sector that is not identified. So they cannot really benefit from social services. They cannot benefit from growth. And, and, and part of that process now is to say, how can we ensure that we bring these people into what is supposed to be the promising part of Africa as we go forward. So that is also part of the work that we're doing. We're of course working uh, uh, very closely together with ONGTAD to understand as we do the e-commerce strategies, the corollary is what is the, 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 the science, technology, engineering and math skills that we need to develop so that the data, the processing, a lot of the, the, the value that comes from e-commerce is from the applications we need to produce the goods on the continent so that we can sell them, but we also need to design the applications on the continent and patent them. The second part of the CFTA discussion is around intellectual property rights, and so a lot of the work that we're doing is to ensure that Africa is, actually has a seat on the table when we talk about intellectual property rights and how we can actually take advantage of this e-commerce digital uh, economy to ensure that Africa begins to gain and gain much faster on that space. And we see occasionally, very 
often now when young African girls, it's mostly girls, go to Silicon Valley, they win all these competitions. So clearly, it's a gender neutral space where we can get a lot more women into economic activity much faster. So we really hope that as we do the work on the e-commerce, we contribute on the harmonization, on the regulatory framework, we can come together and realize this next dream for Africa, which is the digital economy. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Vera. Thank you for highlighting the potential of Africa. I think that's something uh, very important, uh, finding African solution. And I think there's a request for African products out there. I, I checked the numbers again. Agricultural products in Europe are only 16%. So there's a need, there's potential, and sharing numbers is great. I, I found one number. The, sh the African share of international e-commerce or e-trade is only 2.6%. So there's a lot of air. Now, I'd like to um, pass to Mr. Bishar As uh, uh, Hussein, he's Director General for Unim from uh, Universal Par um, Postal Union, and uh, I think you have a lot to share with us on the question of cross-border and uh, how one of the most important things, how do we get these packages and parcels across the borders? Well, thank you very much, uh, our moderator. Your Excellency, Dr. Kitui, senior panelist here on the High table. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you. The Universal Postal Union is proud to be an active partner of the E Trade for All initiative. I would like to start by commending UNCTAD for organizing this meeting and all the partners gathered here today for their commitment to the objectives of the E Trade for All. At the UPU, we consider E Trade for All as a unique effort as it is built on a cross-sectional synergies to address the challenges faced by many LDCs, as well as developing countries, in their efforts to fully include into the e-commerce value chain. What makes this initiative unique is its multi-stakeholder nature. Through the e-trade for all platform, the UPU and other partners involved have pulled their synergies together to accomplish a great deal of work while avoiding duplication of efforts. The UPU has mainly been involved in assessment work that's aimed at underlining the critical role of the postal networks in driving the e-trade for all implementation in countries concerned. As the United Nations Agency in charge of postal services, two key e-trade for all policy areas is particular, in particular of great relevance to us. Trade logistics and payment solutions. These are the two areas we are interested. The two are very DNA of the posts and critical components in the e-commerce and e-trade value chain. In each of the assessments undertaken so far, the importance of the postal sector as a delivery infrastructure for e-trade and e-commerce has been underscored. We have also identified gaps and challenges that need to be addressed in order to position the post as the contributor to e-commerce readiness in the selected countries. So how do we move forward and translate assessments and recommendations into action? First, we aim at sensitizing governments to not only be fully involved, but also committed in driving the uptake of e-commerce in their respective countries. Government's role is key to success in this initiative. There has been many private individuals who have tried to set up e-logistics in Africa, but there are challenges. If there is no enabling legislations or there is no government support, or the customs organizations are not engaged, or the infrastructure is not set properly, or the national addressing systems are not there, then these are all barriers to the challenges, uh, I mean, to e-commerce. Secondly, on the trade logistics side, the UPU is working directly with postal operators at country level to build their operational readiness for e-commerce. We are providing them with IT tools and solutions that have direct impact on their logistic capabilities, on the improvements of their operational processes, as well as with customs and carriers. We also support our member countries in building sound national addressing systems, which is very often identified in the assessment as a key infrastructure gap in the development of e-commerce. On the payment solution side, the posts, especially in Africa, are key players to be considered and supported. 
Here again, we bring concrete and tangible solutions and support through provisions of a targeted technical assistance to posts that are keen to digitize their financials and, and payment systems. Through our financial inclusion technical assistance facility, we call it FITAF, we promote public-private partnerships between posts and fintechs and other providers in order to foster financial inclusion for individuals and businesses. I will later this week announce officially four first African countries that will benefit from the support of our facility. It is our goal to closely work with other partners in order to fully realize the promise that E-Trade for All Framework holds. We do recognize the fact that without galvanizing the necessary resources and support from partners and donors, our call for action and implementation of this framework will remain ineffective. The UPU is ready to do its part and is already working, so despite its uh, limited resources. However, I wish to urge all donor agencies, development banks, and development partners to come forward and support the critical initiatives to achieve the required impact. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank uh, Angtel again for bringing us together. In 2016, the first initiative was launched. The UPU has been a partner in this uh, effort. What I want to say is that um, we have realized in UPU that we need to have, just like Ms. Vera has just said uh, just a few minutes ago, that we need to have a continental e-commerce strategy and policy. If you develop a system in South Africa and you set one in Tunisia and one in Kenya and one in Senegal and they don't talk to each other, then we'll fail in our responsibility to be able to to build that uh, 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 connectivity between ourselves. Of course, there are many barriers. I don't want to go into all of them, you know. Technical barriers, logistics systems, infrastructure, uh, appropriate legislation, and other policy issues. But what is critical for me here is how do we get our countries to be able to have a common platform on which they can be able to trade and exchange goods. Africa is not a dumping ground for things which are produced outside this continent. We have a lot of goods and services that we can provide in this continent which are required outside the world. So it is on the basis of this that the Universal Postal Union has now developed what we call Ecom at Africa, a platform just like the Alibaba, which is uniform, which has the same strategy, the same design, the same IT uh, backbone infrastructure, which now we are piloting with a couple of African countries and, uh, of course, I'll be able to address this a little later in the next panel. But that's an initiative we have just started. And uh, I'm very uh, optimistic that uh, a number of countries have come forward and put in their programs together. I want to share this with you later. But, Madam, I do appreciate uh, that uh, this initiative, we need really to talk to each other. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Hussein. I think you made it quite visible how important it is that this is a multi-stakeholder process because you need all the stakeholders on board to really have impact. Now I would like to turn to, I don't have to introduce her, I think everybody knows her in the room, Arancha Gonzalez. She's Executive Director of the International Trade Center. And it's been mentioned by Vera, the potential e-commerce has for SMEs, for women, women, taking them out of the informal sector, is fantastic, and I know you're one of the best ambassadors I know that uh, uh, states clearly what a potential this field has for women empowerment and empowerment of SMEs. Arantxa, you have the word. Thank you very much, Daniela, and thank you, uh, Mukisa, for convening us all here. Uh, we are very, very happy to be uh, in Nairobi for a very simple reason. Many people talk about the fourth industrial revolution, but in reality, we are living the first digital revolution. And it's only appropriate that in this first digital revolution, Africa puts its mark in shaping this revolution. So not just uh, Africa as a rules taker or as a market for others, uh, but Africa as shaping the rules that will govern this first digital revolution. This is my starting point. Anted has asked us 
one very simple question. Uh, they have uh, put uh, on the market rapid e-trade readiness reviews. What do we do after these reviews are done? And how can each one of us contribute to taking these reviews forward? ITC thinks it can contribute in three ways. Number one, transforming uh, the, I, the areas that have been identified in these reviews into actionable strategies that will drill down the specifics of each one of the areas that have, have been identified with actionable measures that governments, that private sector, that organizations, uh, that uh, civil society can take to materialize those results. This is precisely uh, what uh, we have done in a number of African countries, from Gambia to Guinea, Rwanda, or Senegal. And put e-commerce within the broader ICT services sector, which is uh, what this is about. Second, we believe uh, we can uh, bring the focus on digital entrepreneurship. The actions that have been identified have to be actions for entrepreneurs to thrive in this digital space. Entrepreneurs that are going to be at the origin of the platforms, uh, the financial or payment solutions, the logistic solutions that need to be developed uh, to realize uh, the potential of electronic commerce. But also working on digital skills that will help businesses sell online. Businesses already and, and uh, anyone in Africa can buy online. The challenge of this discussion is, as we just heard uh, uh, from Mukisa Kituyi, making sure that African entrepreneurs can also sell online. So where we think we can bring uh, an added value to this Discussion is by focusing on digital entrepreneurship. This is what we are doing in Rwanda, and we're doing this uh, with Daniela and her colleagues in the GIZ. We are doing this in Uganda and Senegal, uh, together with the Netherlands. We are doing this in UMOA, together with the EU. We are doing this in Morocco, and the list goes on. And if you want to know what this is about, uh, you only need to ask eight companies that we have brought to this discussion. Let me tell you who they are. Xente, working on fintech in Uganda. Simba Women, working to connect women entrepreneurs to digital marketplaces. Yaka and Innovex, selling services, education services online. Kabibe, Prectec, Clinic Master. All of these are companies that are active in this space, and there are millions like them in this continent. What we have to do is help them thrive in electronic commerce markets. My third and final contribution would be to say that we have to bring what we hear from these businesses to the policymakers, so that the regulatory frameworks, the ecosystems that need to be built, are built on the basis of what businesses tell us need to be fixed. This is what uh, we have done uh, with uh, polling more than 2,000 uh, companies across the world. Uh, on electronic commerce, the obstacles uh, and the challenges they faced, which we brought uh, to the WTO membership for them to understand what is it that they need to fix as they discuss electronic commerce in the World Trade Organization. To conclude, my sense is that Africa has a big contribution to make to shape the e-commerce ecosystem, and Africa can synergize two processes uh, that are ongoing. Process number one, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement that must absolutely focus on this electronic commerce space because this is very adapted and adaptable to the reality of uh, cross-border uh, small businesses in this continent. And two, the ongoing discussions in the World Trade Organization. For the first time in history, Africa has an opportunity not to take the rules that someone else makes in the WTO, but to make these rules in WTO as it is making those rules in the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So thanks again, uh, Daniela and colleagues, uh, for this opportunity and looking forward uh, to the conversations this week.
Yes, uh, thank you very much, Arantxa, uh, for um, showing and proving that uh, you're standing there at the side of SMEs uh, that have it very difficult in this field um, uh, of e-commerce and standing at the side of women uh, supporting them. Because I think if we don't manage to prove to the people that e-commerce can have an impact, then we're losing altogether. So this is what we need to do. They need tangible results. People need to feel that it makes a difference. So thanks for being there. Now, the whole Geneva community would not be complete if uh, we did not have the enhanced integrated framework. So uh, I would like to welcome Annette Mesumsemuvemba. Uh, she's uh, executive director. No, sorry. You're, I made you more than you are at the moment, right? But you're getting there, right? <laughs> She's Deputy Executive Director um, of the Enhanced Integrated Framework. Uh, welcome, the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Daniela, and thank you for bestowing upon me a new title. <laughs> um, uh, SG Kitui, um, distinguished members of the panel, uh, and uh, the audience. Um, I'm delighted to be here today, and I've listened very keenly to the speakers that came before me. I think um, this topic, the importance of this topic cannot be overemphasized. Uh, we've heard from everybody why e-commerce is important for the continent, and I would like to commend uh, UNCTAD for bringing the discussion to Nairobi. Um, Two-thirds of the country where the EIF works are in Africa, and this is really, really important for us because it means we'll have more conversations, we'll have more connections, we'll have more engagement, because of this exposure. So, um, Unktad, again, I would like to commend you um, for organizing this session. I also had a very close look at the theme, and it says empowering. Empowering means that you recognize that there are strengths already. All that is needed is to build upon those strengths so that they can be a leap. Again, the choice of that theme was, um, I think, um, commendable. I'm delighted. Um, as a representative of a partnership program to comment on, on what we have done to implement actions uh, from e-trade readiness assessments. We had a discussion earlier in the year where we talked about um, the things that we were planning to do, and I'm delighted to report that we've taken a step forward in that area. Working with Senegal, we are now uh, contributing to um, the development of their e-commerce strategy. And a few weeks back, we had discussions with Minister Sar, who is coordinating an e-commerce regional program to bring together value chains that are important for the region. So while there are value chains in each of these countries, in Senegal, in Burkina Faso, in Guinea, all focused on mango, how does West Africa ensure that um, that value chain is reaching external markets using e-commerce. So moving forward beyond just the assessments to actions and ensuring an ownership process at country level. In Rwanda, and I had um, uh, Arancha clearly already um, working with the country, they've proposed to us a program that will include access to international e-payment solutions and platforms to strengthen their regulatory frameworks for consumer protection and intellectual property. Again, that's a practical solution that Rwanda as a country has brought to us, proposing for um, support to these um, important areas that have been identified. These are just a few examples in Africa, but uh, because we work elsewhere in the world and we think in, in other LDCs, not in the world, and we think that there are a number of um, learning opportunities I would like to share what's happening elsewhere that I hope will also enable us to learn. In Bhutan, we've contributed to uh, the development of an online uh, platform for auctioning of potatoes. That is a very practical uh, platform that enables farmers based in rural areas to bring their potatoes to a central place where an on auction, online auctioning process happens. Many of them do not even have to move to the marketplace. The potatoes are pulled and taken to this uh, marketplace through their cooperatives and auctioned online. It's bringing greater income for farmers. It's allowing women to participate and contribute and get engaged. It is such practical solutions that we need even here in Africa. I've listened to the discussions since the, since the morning started, and we've heard 
a number of solutions. I don't think we are sh uh, short of solutions. I think what needs to happen now is the implementation. We also need to try and um, be creative and inno innovative in the approach so that the solutions that we, ha we have target the enterprises at the various levels, that we target enterprises that are micro and have solutions for them. We've heard about mobile phone uh, penetration. How do we then work with the countries to ensure that that tool is working for the small uh, enterprises? Um, I would like to further um, in inform you that um, we are finalizing the process of launching our new uh, strategy for 2019 to 2022, and by the end of this month, we'll have a steering committee where we will disseminate um, the key thematic areas of work. And emphasis has been placed on e-commerce within that strategy. We will dedicate thematic resources to focus on priority intervention on this space. We're looking at innovative approaches, for example, um, putting aside resources that could be targeted to private sector enterprises, working, of course, with our partners and, and international agencies, so that we broaden our work beyond working on institutional mechanisms in country, but rather also ensuring that the private sector and, um, is also engaged and involved. We therefore look forward to collaborating with our partner agencies, uh, such as UNCTAD, ITC, and others, to deliver these ambitions. Other approaches that we have taken is to ensure the inclusion of a DTIS chapter on e-commerce in all DTIS updates. So for all DTIS updates that are coming up, we've advised that it's important to have a chapter focused on this um, important issue. This is because the DTIS is a blueprint for which resource mobilization happens for projects in country. If this topical issue is missing, resources will be mobilized on many other areas, excluding this important um, area. Um, as I conclude, again, um, it's very clear we know the solutions. I think let's get down to action. Let's get down, let's build partnerships that deliver impactful results, that deliver tangible results. And I'm really pleased that we work closely with all the um, agencies here um, at the, uh, uh, for the, with the panel. Even with the Universal Postal Union, we started a conversation lately, and um, I'm really happy that uh, it will lead to, uh, to some fruitful uh, results, hopefully. It's those collaborations, that, that those partnerships that allow us to harness resources and to work together. Because individually, perhaps we won't um, go a long way, but together, I'm sure we'll deliver good results for this continent. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Annette. Yes, taking it from assessment to action. I think this is very important because with these assessments, you create a momentum, um, awareness of where are the gaps, how do we bridge them. And I think it's up to the agencies together with the donors and international organizations to then decide what do we do with this momentum and how can we deliver on fulfilling the recommendations. So I think it's important to have uh, very, um, not such a long time lag between both of them. And since we have the first assessments now, we really all need to come into action. So at this point, I would like to dismiss the panel of agencies um, because uh, there's been such, uh, so much request. So we will just change the panel at this point. There are many, many people more that we want to listen to. And uh, then uh, we will also have a presentation from Vitali who will give us a first insight uh, of the main findings of the existing assessments. And so he will get ready. And I would like to ask you for a round of applause for these really great panelists for being here. Yes, thank you very much. So I would like the next group of panelists from government representatives to please come to the stage.
Okay, with no further ado, because we're running out of time, but I think it's a good signal that we have so many people who are just eager to speak here. We have very high representatives on this panel now from the uh, taking the government perspective. But as mentioned, I would like to pass now uh, to Alessandro Vitali. He is advisor and consultant for the UNCTAD, and he will give us an insight on the first maybe conclusions or main findings of the first assessments. Vitali, you have the word. Thank you, moderator, and good afternoon, distinguished members of the panel and participants. It's a great honor to be here on this occasion and to be the first panelist with a PowerPoint presentation that is here on the screen. And we look together at uh, rapid E-Trade uh, readiness assessments in African LDCs, findings and recommendations, and in particular, how to move from assessments uh, to, to actions. The Rapid E-Trade Readiness Assessments for uh, LDCs, abbreviated ET Ready, are a spin-off for the E-Trade for All uh, Partnership. They serve the purpose of helping countries in their policy formulation processes and uh, in dialogue in a relevant uh, e-commerce and digital economy fora. ET Ready covers uh, seven policy areas. We will look at uh, each of them uh, more in, uh, in detail, building, up, uh, building upon uh, uh, seven already completed uh, ET Ready in, in Africa, while we have uh, six more uh, underways. Looking at the first policy area, which is policy and strategy formulation, what we've seen is that typically e-commerce agenda is diluted within a broader digital economy and uh, ICT policy discussions. And uh, also that e-commerce is not sufficiently mainstream into national trade development strategies. And I'm glad that we heard from uh, the EIF that the next uh, rounds of uh, DTIS will feature also an e-commerce dimension. Policy formulation suffers from a lack of coordination across agencies, a certain fragmentation of stakeholders groups, and a lack of data. We mostly have data relating to ICT, but not specifically focusing on e-commerce trends. As a result, the public-private dialogue is often underutilized, as well as the potential of, a women, uh, of the women voice in policy making is uh, almost quasi absent. Looking at the recommendations, there is a growing consensus on the need to have a holistic approach to e-commerce uh, through the elaboration of uh, e-commerce uh, strategies. These strategies should be inclusive, look at ways uh, to scale up the participation of women and uh, vulnerable groups into the digital economy. And uh, I would like to make a reference, uh, for example, to Burkina Faso that elaborated uh, an e-commerce strategy already in uh, 2013. But what we learned is that uh, uh, when there is not in place an operational uh, implementation framework uh, and a resources mobilization plan, uh, then there are risks that the, uh, the strategy will uh, not lead to success. So for, uh, for this, it's extremely useful to have um, interministerial co coordination groups in place, uh, committees, uh, especially if they are uh, championed by a leading agency that can act as a mobilizer. And uh, we've seen example in uh, Senegal and uh, Mad Madagascar, for example, with such committees in place. But what we recommend is, th recommended is that uh, these committees should uh, have dedicated uh, human and financial resources if you want to make them uh, meaningful, uh, inclusive, uh, visible, and uh, to have a strategic vision. E-commerce monitoring tools. There is a need to have updated, updated stakeholders mapping and also to have a digital economy observatories, for example, that can capture information on uh, gender disaggregated data, info, data on uh, types and volumes of transactions. So, and stakeholders, stakeholders awareness raising programs. Here the key message to deliver uh, is um, how to conduct uh, uh, e-commerce transactions in a safe and consumer-friendly environment. And uh, lastly, in terms of private sector coordination and representation, uh, countries can think of setting up um, groups or associations of uh, e-commerce operators. Look at the next policy area, ICT infrastructure and services. What we've seen is a growing amount of investments underway in um, national and regional um, uh, ICT infrastructures. We've seen, for example, uh, the World Bank heavily investing in West Africa through the WORSIC program, or uh, national ambitious plans like uh, the, Zambia Mast uh, the, Zambia, uh, the Smart Zambia Master Plan. But 
the main, the main obstacle still remains um, broadband connectivity remains limited and expensive. Uh, quality of service is also sometimes quite poor, and um, on top of that, we, we, can't, we can't forget that less than 30% of uh, African LDC's population doesn't have access to electricity. So the result of this is that the connectivity remains mostly mobile-driven, and uh, this is uh, shaping also the, the way how e-commerce is de developing, uh, which is a sort of uh, mobile e-commerce, uh, heavily reliant on uh, the use of uh, social media and basic technologies like uh, USSD. And in line with this, uh, with this, with this reasoning, uh, also informal e-commerce is uh, proliferating, uh, while at the same time we have, we have also seen a growing demand for uh, business diversification inspired by recognized uh, e-commerce good practices uh, and by a growing uptake of uh, e-government services. What is usually recommended is to scale up infrastructure investments in uh, fiber optic networks uh, and international connections. And you can use uh, a smart mix of uh, incentives and measures like uh, uh, public-private uh, partnership arrangements, uh, infrastructure sharing among uh, operators, uh, competitive licensing, better mobili mobilization of uh, universal access funds. But don't forget to bridge the, ga the gap in the last mile connectivity. And for example, we have seen uh, in Togo how the government is partnering with uh, telecom operators uh, in uh, installing uh, Wi-Fi public hotspots in uh, universities and underserved areas. Of course, the appropriate mix will depend on uh, country-specific fa factors, uh, particularly the economics of technology adoption and the regulatory interventions, uh, the geography, and so on. And another aspect to carefully deal with is the quality of service. Despite the fact that uh, QoS has been um, increasingly integrated into the mandates of uh, telecom regulatory agencies, uh, regulators need, need to stay vigilant and um, uh, put in place up-to-date uh, QoS measurement techniques and promote the transparency of results. Looking at payment solutions, well, there is no secret here. There is no secret here. Cash-based uh, transactions uh, still remain uh, dominant in African LDCs, uh, and uh, cash on delivery is the prevailing mode of uh, payment in um, uh, African LDCs e-commerce. Uh, and this is justified by the fact that there is uh, sometimes uh, among the population a growing associ association of uh, e-commerce with uh, uh, transactions which are uh, um, not, uh, not tr trustworthiness not trustworthy. And um, yeah, payments online uh, remain scarce, and mobile payments, uh, despite the tremendous growth in, um, in uh, mobile payments, uh, still remain uh, uh, mainly cash transfers rather than uh, merchant payments. Uh, so payments also remain mostly intranetwork, uh, and bottlenecks are encountered in uh, cross-border payments. So what is usually recommended is that to promote, uh, still continue to promote mobile payments and other cashless solutions. And countries can also consider adhering to platforms like uh, the um, Better Than Cash Alliance. Government can still play, play a role in promoting e-payment schemes, like a digitization of salaries, grants and subsidies, tax, government services, and so on while at the same time e-money operators should also contribute by increasing uh, the agent network and also the number of uh, retail payment outlets. The regulatory and cooperation framework have also to evolve to allow interoperability of different financial services and payment systems, encourage innovations in uh, e-payment e platforms governance and enable different means of cross-border uh, e-payments transactions. Looking at the trade logistics and uh, facilitation, in our assessments, we've seen that more and more services such as online tracking and guaranteed deliveries are being offered by the postal system and uh, the logistics market. But still, last mile delivery, delivery remains an issue. Reliable street address systems is most of the time inexistent, and this increases the time and cost of deliveries. We've seen, for example, uh, in Senegal, uh, the private sector pointing out that uh, it was uh, sometimes uh, easier and cheaper to honor international transactions from Dakar rather than to serve uh, remote areas in the country. But at the same time, a wealth of solutions are spreading across the continent. Uh, We're seeing the use of tricycles in delivery up to the, to the introductions of drones, especially in East Africa. We've seen that in Uganda and Madagascar. 
in terms of recommendations, in addition to the development of a national street address uh, systems, countries can also consider the adapting geospatial applications, like we've seen uh, in Liberia, some online stores using uh, uh, watch rewards to, to find uh, physical addresses of, um, of people. And in terms of cross-border transactions, uh, for more efficient customs procedures, the way to go is a paperless trade and expanding uh, single window systems. Also, countries can consider like establishing the minimis rules, meaning uh, uh, certain levels of duties exemptions below a certain threshold, and also take advantage of uh, the trade facilitation agreement, in particular provisions on uh, expedited shipment. Also, there is space to encourage cooperation between stakeholders to design e-commerce delivery solutions. We have seen uh, Posta Uganda partnering, partnering with Jumia in uh, using uh, the postal network uh, as a um, pickup, lo the, post the offices of the postal ne network uh, as uh, pickup locations for goods bought online. Also, rehabilitation of physical infrastructures, that should remain a critical priority, along with the uptake and automation of uh, uh, logistics management operations. And then the last point I would like to make is also to work to reduce uh, um, the burden of um, uh, informal operators within uh, the e-commerce logistics chain uh, to reestablish uh, a certain level of uh, fair competition. Looking at the legal and uh, regulatory frameworks, uh, we've seen African regional economic communities uh, that have been instrumental to provide uh, an overarching legal framework uh, but still countries are uh, lagging behind in uh, transposing and adapting uh, provisions. And also they are not um, adapting fast enough to new technological and normative ev evolutions happening in the digital economy. So capacity to implement the legal framework remains an issue. Private sector and consumers are often unaware of how to exploit the legal framework. And also provisions for cross-border e-commerce are often missing. So in terms of recommendations, what is usually recommended uh, in the ET Redis is to first have a, a regulatory gap analysis so that the, it is a critical starting point leading to the development of baseline legislation based on international legal instruments. Capacity building is needed for lawmakers, the, the judiciary, and uh, members of the parliament, as well as raising public awareness of existing laws among the private sectors and uh, consumers associations. Also strengthen the advocacy capacity of consumers associations and uh, private sector umbrella organizations because uh, so in this way you can uh, make these organizations more effective in engaging in a, a policy dialogue on issues at the frontier of the digital economy. Also you can consider rolling out uh, certification schemes for trusted e-commerce operators. And there is a room here for greater coordination between, uh, between national standards bodies and uh, Pan-African uh, quality infrastructure institutions. Looking at skills development, what we found is that uh, the e-commerce general knowledge uh, and awareness uh, varies across groups. It's normally quite low among the general population and also across governments, but it's uh, quite growing uh, in, uh, among the youth and the diaspora. Good quality courses in important areas such as uh, web-based marketing and uh, digital business skills are rare, but we've seen a flourishing environment for startups facilitated by incubators, uh, co-working spaces, and fab labs. However, the transformation of startups into sustainable uh, SMEs remains still critical. And I'm sure that experiences of panelists from uh, Bongo Hive and the Biogo Lab will uh, tell us more about the challenging environment that they are facing. In terms of recommendations, uh, what is we usually recommend is to first assess the e-commerce skills gap and uh, initiate bigger reforms in the training uh, and education programs to integrate new skills relevant for, uh, for e-commerce. Also, the trade and business support infrastructure needs to reposition itself. Business support organizations can retrain staff and enter into partnership with uh, business schools, tech hubs, uh, and incubators so that uh, they uh, end up retargeting their business development services uh, in a way that they, they, can, they can support uh, enterprises and uh, enhance e-commerce uh, SMEs uh, capabilities to connect with and act as uh, regional platforms, for example. New opportunities for uh, women entrep entrepreneurship also can open up uh, through skills development and greater involvement of women business associations. 
Another uh, instrumental way to also to stimulate the local e-commerce market would be for uh, procurement. And we've seen, for example, e-procurement platforms uh, gaining speed in Liberia. And looking at the last policy area, which is access to financing, basically established lending practices uh, favor large firms and traditional uh, businesses. High interest rates, uh, strict uh, eligibility criteria for loans, and uh, collateral requirements are some of the barriers uh, faced by micro and small and medium enterprises. Alternative financing mechanisms are slowly, emer um, slowly emerging, but overall business management skills remain weak. So in terms of recommendations, uh, build capacity of business and women-led associations uh, so that in a way that they can uh, replicate uh, and, uh, their trainings uh, and services offers uh, to enhance the capacity of uh, SMEs to develop uh, bankable business plans. Also, these associations could also partner with the commercial banks to develop products which are relevant for e-commerce and digital business. On the financial institution side, lending standards also should be reviewed. For example, banks could loosen their uh, uh, physical collateral requirements by also looking uh, at um, the value of um, market capability, export capability, technology, and experience um, of SMEs. And on the regulators and the bank side, for example, the agency banking model would also contribute to expanding uh, financial services and, inclu and inclusion. Lastly, increase awareness about alternative funding models. There are uh, instruments like innovation grants, loan guarantees, incubators, venture capital, crowdfunding, that still can untap some uh, opportunities in terms of funding uh, SMEs. I think we can approach to the conclusions. So we have seen some common trends and uh, challenges emerging, and they are all calling for a better strategization uh, of um, e-commerce development policies. Regional economic communities can play here a great role to, towards greater coordination and harmonization. We have seen uh, first SADC, but also more recently uh, the UMOA, uh, going towards the elaboration of a regional action plan. But also, let me look at the value of the ETREDIS itself. In my opinion, what is important is ETREDIS is not a simple study or a report. I think uh, you all know about uh, studies being um, in, draw in, in drawers and taking dust. But what is important in the ETREDIS is the process. They are a process enabler. So, because given their demand-driven nature, uh, countries are signaling uh, when they demand uh, an ET ready that they are ready to take ownership uh, of the process turning recommendations into development outcomes. So ET readies come with an action matrix, an indication of uh, potential uh, donors uh, and uh, uh, technical and financial partners. So countries can use this tool to mobilize uh, uh, the support that is needed. So what we need to concentrate now is to start developing bankable uh, project proposals that are needed to advance the rollout of e-commerce. Thank you. Yes, Asante Sana, Alessandro, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, even for those who have not gone through assessments, these findings and recommendations are helpful. Now, I want to turn to the country distinguished representatives. And in particular, I would like to ask the question, uh, of course, what else? To what extent have these assessments been useful for you? And maybe what steps have your governments already undertaken to implement some of these recommendations? And firstly, I turn to His Excellency Frederick Gumengobi. He is State Minister of Uganda. Minister, you have the floor. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Daniela and my colleagues, the panelists, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity, first of all, thank the government of Germany and the other development partners for this assessment. It's no doubt an opportunity that was created to the country to bring out aspects of digitalization and e-commerce. Definitely, out of this assessment, we have also got an opportunity 
to identify the opportunities that we can exploit for its development. The assessment also rates the government commitment on the sector strategies, and it also goes ahead to analyze that Uganda has made tremendous efforts in the region by embracing e-commerce and also prioritizing it in our national development plan too. We have also regulations to the effect in order to, come to support e-commerce, but also the assessment went ahead to identify the policy gaps, especially on ICT infrastructures. Those identified, the gaps identified <coughs> include skills, trade logistics, to mention but a few. In all, the assessment is a baseline study, and it also goes ahead to provide a roadmap which gives us an opportunity on what to do next. So without mentioning, we'd like to thank the assessment and the assessors for the input done. We have a responsibility to elaborate to the audience on what we are currently doing as a country. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll find that uh, logistics and the trade facilitation is a very paramount aspect on e-commerce. For example, on e-trade, we have formed the e-trade portal and launched it. This is an opportunity for us to bring together all business people in order for them to be updated on information, on formalization of procedures, re relevant documentation for their businesses. We would also look at the e single window that has been initiated in the country. Here, several entities are brought to one platform to share, register, and do business. This has reduced the time of doing business by almost 30%. We have also the online e-tax services. This is by the Uganda Revenue Authority, where people register for their tax identification numbers online. They generate payments for domestic taxes, ETC. The country also has a strategic challenge of improving the tourism sector. So to easen and attract tourism, the country <coughs> has now brought up a tourism application for visas online. This has increased the influx or the inflow of tourists. But at the same time, you know, Doing business online requires electricity. We have to extend electricity to the rural areas in order to capture local governments that are not covered. Currently, we are on a very comprehensive program of extending electricity to the rural areas, and it is one of the priorities of the country, especially with the formation of the new dams that are about to be completed. We have also made uh, progress in the legal framework. The legislation on ICT has been developed and we have electronic signatures and other bills also before Parliament. Madam Chair, we also need to share with colleagues on what we need to do as a country. One, it has been, it was noted in the report that we are exporting online more than we import. 
Now, what do we need to do? We need to balance and ensure that more imports are online than exports. <clears throat> the country imports, businessmen import vehicles to the country. And this takes a lot of money, but it also has some saving in a sense that on E-Line, the traders no longer board the planes to spend money on transport and on accommodation. They order for items online. But at the same time, we need your suffice it to note that the current, this is, we have an agro-based economy, so we need to improve agribusiness. And this improvement, we must make sure that the, the agro dealers have put a lot of emphasis. We need to build capacity for them to know that they, are, they can market their produce online. And this is a very important aspect and it also requires for value addition. We also looked at the, we need to build a digitalized skill and the content. We need people to have skills in the dictos and the contents. How do we do this? People must understand. People must be told that if you went e-business, you would have to save a lot, a lot. But suffice it to note also that the country has gone ahead to institute the universal education. Because if you are not educated, definitely you cannot use e-business for your own development. We have also looked at the development of the online markets, reviews, and also there is a very big challenge of us looking at the curriculum. We need to delete on the curriculum, we need to delete from the curriculum out to the courses in order to make ICT very comparison. Now, we need a mindset change. This is very important because people must build the confidence and the trust on what we are doing. Their minds must change and they must have uh, trust in what we are doing in order for them to capture the e-business approach. But we need to roll out also the postal services, the network. It should only not be limited to urbanized places, but we need it across the country. Because when we do this, we'll be capturing the entire local government in order for them to improve on doing business. You are aware that we need, we have a very big population of young men and ladies. The population, 50% uh, of the population in Uganda is for young men, 50%. These need to be funded in order to meet their innovations. They are very adventurous, and that's why in this report it is mentioned that Uganda as a country has progressed so much because the population is synonymous with adventures, in, especially in the ICT. But access to affordable finance is a very big problem. Until we look at this, that would also be very important. Lastly, we need to look at the legal regime. We must be able to adapt with the changes in the ICT because uh, it changes so fast and the legislation must also be in line. Lastly, uh, on the other request, uh, we thought it would be better after the assessment then we could have a peer review. The peer review will allow us to assess how far we've gone, what we need to, lead, to learn from the others. And I'm sure a combination of all this shall develop the country and we shall be there. I want to thank you. Thank you, Minister. Very um, interesting insights and thank you for sharing with us. This has to do also with trust and that you trust us to use this information. And I think the peer review is a very interesting aspect that probably UNCTAD will take a close look at. Now, um, looking at the time, um, we have a lot of panelists and floor interventions and private sector coming up. So I would um, ask the next panelist, please, to uh, stick to the time and, if possible, even to cut, make it short, as, as short as possible. And uh, I would like to pass on to Mr. Richard Randri. 
Randrian Mantranto. I don't know. <laughs> He's special advisor to the Prime Minister in Madagascar. You have the floor. Thank you, and uh, I appreciate that you spelled my name properly. Uh, I, I know that uh, Malagasy names are quite uh, long, but nobody's perfect, so thank you, uh, Chair. I'm going to speak in French, uh, despite the fact that I can also uh, make a presentation in, in English, because I see you have headsets, and it would be much easier for me since the report, uh, the uh, rapid evaluation rapide is in French, so it's going to uh, make uh, easier the presentation. First of all, I would like to warmly thank UNCTAD and, of course, the Federal Republic of Germany for the invitation made to us, to the government of Madagascar. And here, I give the apologies of the minister who was unable to come but relating to general elections in Madagascar, the campaign is at its height, and so she's unable to come. On the 19th of December, there will be the general election between the two candidates, and therefore she sends her apologies. As far as these elections are concerned, allow me to tell you a short story that is in line with our theme of e-commerce readiness. I have tried to find a translation to that in French, but it doesn't really exist, but we do understand what it means. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chairperson, one of the debates which is so important, which raises so much passion in Madagascar at the moment, relates to a small chip SIM card, like a, a grain of rice, that can be inserted somewhere in the in cows or in fact any animal and thanks to this chip it's possible to track whenever they any cattle has been stolen or hustled or rustled there are many who say we will call the cows and what use is that but the idea in fact ladies and gentlemen the technology exists and why shouldn't Africa use these modern technology possibilities technology relating to training particularly see what's happening in Sweden the Swedish are now very excited about chip sim cards for buying in shops and they put it in between their thumb and f index finger it's like um, having a piercing it hurts a little but then after that you just use your hand place it over the the scanner and there you go you have paid for your air ticket, you've paid for anything. The card is no longer of any use. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at a point where modern technology is accessible to everyone for not very much money. And I'd like to continue to dream with you. The Madagascar government and the new government will be at the vanguard of everything that's possible from a tax point of view, financial point of view, so that we are able in Madagascar to catch up with the four countries that you just quoted, that is, the leaders in electronic commerce, Kenya, Algeria, Egypt. And South Africa and Madagascar will be the first French-speaking country, ladies and gentlemen, which will be in that vanguard Madagascar is currently the 22nd in terms of internet connection and of speed of internet connection just ahead of France, ahead of France. So we are capable in Africa and elsewhere to have a revolution and to leapfrog forward 
forwards all of this to state that the efforts made, the recommendations shared through the rapid assessment on the state of Madagascar e-commerce will allow us to go further forward and accelerate with reforms and I have received some notes on this matter. We have a regulatory context that's which by 2016 we have set up a whole range of laws before we were a little bit stagnant on this one but on electronic signatures, laws against cyber crime, communication from a legal point of view, and recently a law regarding electronic money. So the laws are there in place. We have to implement them, of course. But allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to say one thing. It's not enough to adopt laws. The regulatory framework is not sufficient. There are men and women behind who must respect them or make sure they're respected. And e-commerce is just a tool. The first function of e-commerce is to facilitate our daily life. I gave this example of what's happening in Sweden. Perhaps we will be able to register for UNCTAD using a system like this without having to stand in a queue for two hours. The possibilities with modern technology are extremely wide and will not cost too much. And we can move forwards. As the Minister of State said just now, there's a great deal to be done in terms of training your problems. Minister, are also our problems the same as in Zambia and other countries? We have the same concerns. We don't have perhaps the same capacities. We're not evolving with the same speed for implementation of the necessary reforms. However, we are moving in the same direction and Africa will not will no longer be the guinea pig laboratory for e-commerce, but a country for the future, not just for startups, but also for other commerce. I spoke about the regulatory framework in terms of capacity building. We have set up a fund for, for, for vocational training and uh, ICT is has 1% of the budget from various sources on the fiscal front. Since to, from 2019, we will be setting up a number of fiscal incentives so that we don't lose even those small transactions. We export a great deal. Thousands of dollars disappear in, up in smoke without us being able to capture the volume of these transactions. I represent the government and we must be able to find a way um, to register this 0.5% etc. so that the budget is able to receive those monies. Just a few words about WTO. We're a member of WTO and have acceded to many of their agreements and very soon we will be setting up agreements on information technology. I think it's going to be the two. I don't think it's yet operational, if I've understood properly. We will, of course, be careful about the use of blockchain, which is not necessarily accessible to developing countries, the LDECs at least. We also have in Madagascar a system called TradeNet, which allows us to track closely all customs transactions for international trade. You asked me not to take too long. I don't know whether I was too long, but I would like to thank you for your attention. Oui, merci, Richard. Thank you, Richard. I'm not sure if 
We should use all of the technical possibilities that are open. To Paul Mumba, he's chief, chief economist in the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry from Zambia. Paul, you have the word. Thank you, Madam Moderator and distinguished members of the panel. Let me start uh, by thanking UNCTAD for organizing the conference and for inviting us to participate in this conference. <clears throat> and I would also like, um, on behalf of my delegation, to extend our gratitude to our sponsors who have made it possible for us to be here, as well as for financing the e-trade readiness, readiness assessment for my country. Madam Moderator, I would also like to render our apologies on behalf of our Honorable Minister, who, who was unable uh, to travel and participate in this uh, conference due to some other commitments on the continent that he's attending to. Having said that, I would just like to highlight that uh, the government of the Republic of Zambia recognizes the important role that e-commerce and digital platforms play in an economy, such as creating new opportunities for international trade and efficient economic activities without leaving out uh, small businesses. To this effect, the development of electronic commerce and digital platforms is resonated in national strategic documents such as the 70th National Development Plan, which emphasizes the need for a smart Zambia. It was for this reason that the um, government, through the Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry, requested UNCTAD to undertake a rapid e-trade assessment for Zambia. And this exercise was done in May 2018. And we are really happy that today we are uh, witnessing the launch of this uh, report. Madam Chair, the launch of the e-trade readiness assessment document will be useful for our country in developing informed policies as well as strategies on e-commerce and the digital economy in order for us to build a robust, safe and business-friendly and business -friendly environment in the sector. The, the report has brought out uh, a lot of issues which point to our strengths as well as weaknesses and it has also indicated some of the opportunities and the threats that might come with electronic commerce. Before I, I proceed, let me just uh, highlight uh, some of the uh, activities and programs that the government is implementing. And uh, I must indicate that uh, it is not so different from what the other distinguished delegates have said, like the Honorable Minister from Uganda. When he was making his presentation, I was thinking, why should I speak when he, all the, the problems have been highlighted? But anyway, since I have the floor, let me just say that the government is already implementing some of the uh, programs which, are, which is aimed at enhancing e-commerce in the country. And some of these include the expansion of ICT infrastructure to support e-commerce. Government currently has embarked on an ambitious program to construct 1,009 communication towers in unsaved and underserved areas to enhance access to connectivity and to propel e-transactions. On the legal front, the government is working on enhancing the existing legal framework in order to strengthen the law relating to electronic commerce. The government is in the process of unbundling the Electronic Communication and Transaction Act of 20, number, 20, 20, number 21 of 2009 and its place to introduce three separate uh, laws, which are the Electronic Transactions and E-Commerce Bill, the Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Bill, and the Data Protection Bill. This, this, this uh, measure is aimed at uh, facilitating the strengthening of laws relating to e-commerce. Madam Moderator, government is also working on consumer and competition policies and laws in order to guarantee uh, safety of the electronic commerce users. We are also uh, promoting mobile money services as a tool for financial inclusion. 
uh, talking about uh, trade and logistics services, government through the Zambia Information Communication Technology Authority has embarked on a program which was already referred to by the Secretary General in his address, which is dealing with the street naming and house numbering. This is important for facilitation of uh, electronic uh, commerce because it's difficult to deliver a parcel if you can't have a street name or a house number. In addition to that, uh, government is working on repositioning the Zambia Postal Services as a, a key partner in the implementation of e-commerce. We are also looking at the development of a national uh, payment gateway. And in addition to that, uh, we have also uh, established the national single window uh, uh, payment system, which is being managed by the Zambia Revenue Authority. And all the agencies that have anything to do with uh, collecting of uh, revenue are linked to the ASCUDA system via the, the Zambia Revenue Authority. Madam Moderator, Zambia has also put in place the, is working on establishing the Zambia e-trade portal, which is meant to facilitate sharing of information for electronic commerce. Um, let me just say that uh, as a country, we have taken the recommendations wholly that have been made on, uh, in, the, in the report. And the measures are being put in place to ensure that uh, uh, these recommendations are implemented. And, the start, and as a starting point, uh, our government has already written to UNCTAD to assist the government in uh, coming up with uh, the um, e-commerce uh, strategy for Zambia because that doesn't exist at the moment. And so we look forward to, to support from UNCTAD and all the other cooperating partners in this uh, sector. So without uh, taking much of your time, I would like to end here. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Paul. Uh, that shows there's still work for UNCTAD to do. Uh, even after the assessments, so they don't run out of work. And e-commerce strategies, I think, are really helpful at this point then to decide what are the priorities and how do you proceed on. So now let me turn to the Honorable Her Excellency Ambassador Jagdfeld. We've heard that uh, Sweden has uh, uh, financed and funded four assessments, and of course now we're interested to hear and hear of um, why and what's, to your view, the important role of funding these assessments. Anna, you have the word. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair, Excellencies, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am so delighted to be here uh, today to participate on behalf of the Swedish government. E-commerce is an incredibly important uh, issue for my government. It's an issue where we are investing a lot nationally, but also internationally. And uh, Sweden has been uh, engaged with UNCTAD ever since 2016 uh, when it came to, uh, uh, to engaging when, when it comes to e-commerce e uh, for e-trade for all. Uh, it is true that we have been uh, funding for, uh, for assessments, and, uh, but I have to say, being here today, uh, these were uh, assessments focusing on, on Asia, but being here today and also as the ambassador here in Kenya and listening to the experiences from, uh, from African examples, both from Uganda, from Madagascar, and also now finally from, from Zambia, has really been very enlightening. And uh, I think that there are many important lessons that can be fed in from, from these, uh, these assessments. Um, from our side, we believe that, uh, that the E-Trade Readiness Assessment, they are uh, in a very important uh, uh, baseline and a valuable diagnosis of possibilities and challenges of e-commerce and recommendations, but also on how to handle them. We agree with everyone who has been saying that more emphasis must be put on implementation, uh, and uh, here we think that the follow-up on earlier assessment might be useful to study. Before I say a few words about the implementation phase, let me just briefly say some words on why Sweden is so engaged when it comes to inclusive and sustainable e-commerce development. Digital developments are transforming the global economy and our societies in many different ways, regardless of a country's development stage. 
the Swedish government is convinced that the digital revolution opens up great opportunities for growth, for job, for sustainable development all around the world. And therefore, e-commerce is also a very important tool when it comes to the attainment of the sustainable development goals. The positive Swedish outlook is also based on our national experience in taking advantage of new digital technologies. We have heard one example also uh, from uh, the colleague from, uh, from Madagascar, and I have to say that I was Googling how many Swedes have this microchip uh, implanted. And it is true that there are a few thousands in Sweden who are using this microchip for, develop for, for payments, but it's not, I would say, widespread in our society yet. But it is, I think, a sign of that we are taking the development in this area also nationally very, very seriously. But for us, it's also that e-commerce is, is about, uh, and, and the Swedish society is all about openness to global trade and to investment. And for us, it has promoted a digital transformation and an expansion of global value chains. But also here in Africa, there are some impress impressive examples. We have been hearing some already today, but what I'm thinking about is also, of course, mobile pay systems like M-Pesa or large e-trade platforms like Yumia, which since its launch in 2012 now is present in 14 African countries and in partnership with over 50,000 local companies. But there are also challenges facing development, uh, developing countries and especially LDCs. As reflected in the e-trade readiness assessment presented here today by UNCTAD, bridging the digital divide requires both policy responses and actions in areas like infrastructure, affordability of technologies, capacity building, logistics, but also in trade. This brings me back to the e-trade readiness recommendations, which is of course the focus for today's event. Let me start by stressing that we, we need uh, very clearly, as has also been emphasized by others, a partnership approach for the implementation of e-commerce policies, just like we need it overall for the Agenda 2030. All actors have to be involved. Governments need to enhance legal frameworks to support the growth of e-trade and secure future investments. The role of private business, both national and international, is essential in providing fin financing and in investment. Development cooperation can also give crucial support and serve as a catalyst in raising especially LDC's capacities for benefit from rapidly evolving digital economy. Let me also here mention the importance of integrating a gender perspective. We had a, a person on the previous panel who was discussing this, but for me also representing a, a government that has a, f a feminist foreign policy, the gender aspects must always be, be thought about, and we would say especially in this, this area. We need to see a gender uh, uh, an emphasis on gender perspective in all stages of e-trade readiness. We must bridge the current digital gender divide, where in LDCs only 31% or in LDCs 30% fewer women than men are online. This is also smart economics, since investment in gender equality yields the highest return of all development investments. In Sweden, uh, the government has just adopted a new global strategy for sustainable development for the years 2018 to 2022. This is a strategy that was adopted just earlier this year. One of the priority areas is improved access and increased utilization of open, secure and free internet. Additionally, digitalization is identified as one important area for developing countries' integration into the world economy and global value chains. The implementation of this new strategy is now underway by the Swedish Development Cooperation Agency, SIDA, and I think that this feedback that we have also heard here from the panel today are some of the feedback that will also be able to feed into the, the, the implementation and enrich the implementation of this uh, particular strategy. In this context, I would also like to mention some examples on the many ways in, in which Swedish Development Corporation has been supporting sectors of relevance for the implementation of E-Trade Ready recommendations. I think that this can be divided into two different groups, or this support can be divided into two different groups. First, we have trade policy investments in trade policy, trading capacity and infrastructure. These are, of course, fundamental parts of a successful engagement in e-commerce. But these are also three parts that constitute the Aid for Trade agenda, to which Sweden is a strong supporter. 
The share of, of development aid for the LDCs is consider considerable from our country, including on projects relevant for combating the digital divide, such as physica uh, physical and digital infrastructure, and building the producti productive capacity of firms to be able to participate in the digital economy. Sweden is also the biggest contributor to both EFI, EIF and ITCs represented here today. With these partners together, we work towards strengthening the trade policy capacity in LDCs, but not limited to e-trade aspects and supporting SMEs, especially women-owned, to access international markets and online platforms. The second group where we are giving uh, some support, it is, when it can, it is seem, so to be seen in the context uh, of a broader context that uh, is also involving the underlying barriers. Here, for example, the World Wide Web Foundation. Uh, here, Sweden is supporting many African uh, countries in increased access to internet for people in poverty, especially for women. SIDA also supports the research network after access, which through user surveys has researched the factors that are uh, constraining access to ICT. It also looks beyond access and covers issue of financial, legal and cultural constraints on the use of ICTs. After access has also provided a unique insight in gender and use of ITCs, which we believe will help in bridging the gender digital divide. And just finally, we are also supporting SPIDER, the Swedish program in developing regions. And here we are working towards reducing the digital divide by focusing on skills, regulations, but also on research. In East Africa, SPIDER has started to work with Swedish Post and Telecom Authority to build the capacity of ICT regulators. This, we believe, is a critical area for sustainable digital development. With this, I can only say that we look forward to continued discussions at today's event and beyond. Uh, we really believe that e-commerce for African countries is going to be key for development. And we are also here to listen to how the donor community can best contribute and support. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Ambassador. I think it's, uh, from our point of view, German government who started uh, with the funding of 16 assessments, we're really happy that we have a, another funder, and it's not just us. Uh, otherwise, I guess my minister would at some point say, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Um, but um, I, I think it's good also from time to time to see also your input and how much donors are really investing uh, in this field and area and are still ready to go on um, uh, working with UNCTAD and working with you in implementing these recommendations and taking it um, from the assessment to action. And maybe one interesting uh, data here is, uh, I don't know if it's for Sweden, but all in all, the percentage of aid for trade that it invested in e-commerce lies with only 1%. So this is not enough. We're not, we haven't really managed to shift our aid for trade portfolio into these um, uh, innovative into this direction. So um, next year we have the global um, review on aid for trade. <laughs> Maybe this is something we can pick up. Um, how do we um, shift more towards SDGs, the SDG agenda, and more towards e-commerce? So now I would like to ask the panelists to stay here because we have uh, um, interventions from further government representatives from the floor, as well as private sector. And um, if, if I count right, I think we will also have uh, at the end some time for questions uh, from the audience. So um, please uh, here stay with me so we can, uh, if there are answers for the panelists here, we can then, uh, if there are questions there, we can, we can answer them. So um, now from the floor, um, we have the head of division of the Ministry for the Promotion of Investment, Partnership and Development of State um, telecommunication services from the Senegal, Mr. Ibrahim Koulibaly. You have the word, Mr. Koulibaly. Uh, thank you, um, Madam President. If you are allowed, I, will, I would like to speak in French, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Monsieur. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chair, Honorable Ministers, Ambassadors, Alessandro, good afternoon. I'd like, first of all, to convey the apologies of my minister, who wanted to be here, but who was held back 
by the consultative group in in Paris for mobilizing resources for the second social development plan and uh, she is a major player in that exercise. The rapid assessment of e-commerce in Senegal, we have understood it as a good piece of news for Senegal in terms of challenges we face. I will speak to you about the next steps which we will undertake. The good news for, from our point of view is the dynamism of e-commerce, which has started well with about 60 sites online and developing electronic currency. I'll give some examples. Warig is a platform and another one is called Johnny Johnny, and in one year, about five billion in turnover, about a billion. So for a country such as mine, is enormous. The financial involvement is about 72% with transactions made in 2016 for an investment volume, a legal and regulatory framework is constantly being adapted because the digital economy is moving very fast. We therefore need to move very fast as well before we run the risk of being overtaken by events. We are amending the law. Fiber optics, which we're developing throughout our territory today. 4,500 kilometers worth of fiber optic cables currently knitting the country together and it's our state digital agency which is working on this. So we have close to 70% of things that have been dealt with. I'm referring to procedures. We have uh, customs procedures and so forth which have been digitized. Everything has gone online. The protection of data with a commission for protecting data. And recently, the opening of a sub-regional institute for training in terms of cyber security. To be brief, in terms of challenges, what does the study note? Well, we have the national strategy for e-commerce development. I'll touch on this a little later. We also have the coordination of players and stakeholders. So we have a specificity here in Senegal. We have, just at the level of the state, a number of entities active in the field of e-commerce. We have the Ministry responsible for all things digital, the Ministry which I represent, promotion of investment and state services. Then we have, of course, a trade ministry next to it. And of course, the difficulty is that there isn't sufficient coordination. And then we have the private sector on top of all this. It's fairly developed, but also lacks the ability to coordinate with the other players. to defend its positions, or advocate its positions. We have a group on electronic commerce. I believe you've met them. It's the unit, the body, which brings together all state entities, including the private sector, to discuss issues related to e-commerce. The other challenge to meet is the interoperability of systems. How can we ensure that I, for example, I have a certain ISP, how can I exchange or sell to someone else who might be served by another ISP and to integrate uh, online payment platforms? Uh, all of these are challenges which need to be met. Now, the challenge of financing is something I'll touch on. We have undertaken a number of steps here. And finally, the challenge of the reduction of the digital divide between Dakar and the rest of the country. Dakar and a few major urban regions are fairly developed when it comes uh, to the internet penetration rate and when it comes to uh, telecommunications, but a number of areas in the country aren't. So one has to raise awareness regarding what we're doing, both for state players and the private sector with technical and financial partners. We have to elaborate the strategy. 
with the bolstered integrated framework, which has provided the necessary financing. And then we have the financing more broadly speaking. I'm referring to the Awilabis, which received financing from a delegation to the entrepreneurship, the body for entrepreneurship in 2010, an evaluation was carried out, an assessment, and it enabled it to develop a number of tools. And finally, on data protection, when it comes to financing the launch of the training course, we have a fund that is entirely financed by the private sector in Senegal, the F3PE fund, which enables us to train workers in the private sector as well as in the state sector, students in the field of e-commerce and so forth. I'll leave it at this. I don't want to go on for too long, but I'd like to thank you again on behalf of the government of Senegal. Thank you to UNCTAD for this support in terms of rapid assessment, and we hope that this cooperation will continue in the future. Thank you. Oui, merci, Monsieur Koulibaly. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Koulibaly. Mr. Rashid Darago, he is an economic development expert from the Ministry of Commerce and Private Sector Promotion from Togo. You have the floor. Okay. Merci. Uh... Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniela, Chair of our Commission and of our session. I would like to welcome the panelists and all of you, dear participants. Now, given the presentations which we heard, especially those made by the Minister of State of Uganda and the presentation made by the Special Advisor and my colleague, the Minister for Trade of Zambia, well, based on all this, I wonder, do I also need to make my presentation? Because to be honest, it's the same challenges which we are facing. It's exactly the same situation. And why is it the same situation? Well, development, the development of Africa will, of course, result from the integration of our countries. It is very important that we be able to pool our efforts in terms of action aimed at the development of e-commerce in our countries. I'm also going to present the conclusions of our Minister of Trade. She was so gracious as to honor us with her presence in this very important meeting, important for Africa and for Togo. But unfortunately, as a result of some scheduling conflicts, she was not able to visit Nairobi. Having said this, she did insist that she wanted to reaffirm the good will of the government of Togo aimed at implementing and making greater effort for the implementation of the recommendations made by the assessment report of the state of preparations of e-commerce in Togo. However, I would also like to recall that our assessment, our study of e-commerce in Togo was launched in October in Ouagadougou during a commission carried out by UEMA. And Togo had an opportunity to officially present its report, but it would also be good to revisit the way in which the study was carried out. Now, the study was carried out from the 4th to the 8th of June 2018 by an ANCTAD team with uh, the trade chamber from the private sector. And we took stock of capacity terms in terms of ICTs and e-commerce. This to come up with a number of recommendations to overcome the obstacles to e-commerce. Now, there was uh, significant participation. I welcome this because UNCTAD, of course, uh, congratulated Togo when it came to the mobilization of over 100 participants, representing all stakeholders. 
and uh, all these participants come from the whole value chain of e-commerce. So we had uh, visits on the ground, exchanges with players in the field of e-commerce, discussions with these actors on specific topics linked to an e-trade initiative. Now, UNCTAD's mission met a number of institutions, including the Ministry of Trade, uh, the Ministry for the Digital Economy, Tourism, Planification, and uh, the GEZ, because the GEZ helped us uh, in terms of the carrying out of this study. Now, during this visit, we had discussions on the difficulties, the constraints around e-commerce. And the conclusions of the assessment refer to a great many obstacles uh, on the uh, path towards the development of e-commerce. We have the lack of a strategy for the development of e-commerce the lack of necessary logistical basis. Now, the lack of support, uh, delivery means, because, of course, uh, when it comes to e-commerce, it's very important that one should have the right addresses, which would enable e-traders to deliver the goods bought online. And the study also noticed a number of weaknesses in terms of uh, our electronic uh, transaction law because it didn't sufficiently take into account transboundary trade and commerce. Also, the lack of uh, capacities when it comes to developing e-commerce. Regarding what is at stake in this field, uh, well, we have inclusive social development as well as economic development in Togo. A number of recommendations of the study. are currently being implemented on the ground. We have the adoption, the recent adoption, last week of the law on cyber security and the fight against cybercrime, which was adopted by our parliament on December 6, 2018. This is one of the major recommendations which the report focused on, and we wanted to ensure that by the end of this year, we had this document adopted as required. And then we worked to ensure that we were able to incorporate all of the recommendations in our new development plan. It covers uh, the period through to 2021. It's very important, or 2022 rather. It's very important that we should take into account the action matrix something which we underscored sufficiently. States must take responsibility for recommendations to implement it, how to do it, however well. It's very important that at a strategic level, one be able to take into account these elements to ensure that implementation is easier. And then we participated in the training of e-commerce trainers regarding existing the existing legal framework. One of the recommendations was that e-traders were not familiar with the legal framework they were active in. So we also looked at logistics, the delivery of goods and so forth. All this was carried out. I can also inform you that uh, Togo would like to use the would like to use ICTs rather to develop its architect at its agriculture the way Rwanda does. So agrotech. Agrotech is what we want to use to ensure that we can capitalize on all of ICTs available to assist farmers to increase their yields, their productivity. Today we are working to ensure that we're able to create online enterprises. Now, it takes 24 hours in Togo right now to create an online enterprise. This isn't enough, however. We want to move even faster. We want to have the necessary platforms, which would enable us to create an enterprise in just a few minutes, regardless of where one is in the world. And so, with reliable electronic transactions, one would be able to create one's enterprise. So, as you have noted, efforts are being made by Togo. A great deal does remain to be done, however, especially in terms of reform and the mobilization of technical and financial resources for the implementation, the full-fledged implementation of all of the recommendations of the assessment. Now, in this respect, we are considering to, with the support of UNCTAD, try to organize a round table with all partners of the E-Trade initiative aimed at mobilizing energies and synergies at both national and international levels by way of conclusion. 
we will continue whenever able to extend our heartfelt gratitude to UNCTAD for its multifaceted support which it has provided to all LDCs but to Togo especially. So we extend our gratitude to all of our partners as well. And they include the the National International Corporation Agency, whose support enabled us earlier, as I said, to implement with success our rapid assessment study of the state of preparation of e-commerce in Togo. I thank you. Oui, merci bien, Monsieur. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Nago. Oh, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Gibson Ninati Doepo. He's a consultant for ICT for development from Liberia. You have the word. Hello. Yes. I, I'm Gibson Topo. I bring you greetings from Liberia. And during the course of our interaction today, I think the panelists from Zambia speak on similar cases as per Liberia. But what is more specific to Liberia in terms of progress since the last e-assessment, mobile, mobile morning penetration is very high in all sector, which means in Liberia people are paying via mobile money school fees, hospital bills, and other salary disbursement. We have just launched our national postal address system being sponsored by RPU, so which means that was a greatest challenge for us because without, e, with, without a national postal address system, e-commerce would definitely have a challenge. So last month, the government of Liberia launched its national postal address system. In 2016, we launched our, our fiber optical cable for Metro Morovia, which means in Morovia, major streets are being connected via fiber optic cable. The Central Bank of Liberia is working towards the drive of financial assets market and a cashless economy. Our challenges, energy sector, is weighing down our country. Just last week, through the European Union, we received a funding to reconnect about 40,000 homes. From our government payment system, we are challenged because for the past 12 years, the government has been running two parallel systems, the legacy system and the new system. So which means for a taxpayer to have a tax payment, the government is running more than five systems. Tax, the old system, C tax, the new system, separate business registry, so it's, it's, it's healthy, it's a serious challenge for us. We hope that we can look forward to the international partner wherein they will be able to give us support to synchronize those five, those five fragmented systems into one so our taxpayer can have ease of payment. Some of our challenges, the lack of and the lack of private public sector working group on e-commerce, the access to collateral management system with high tax rate. Back home, our government, most of the transaction is actually manual and you can experience high paper flow. That sends the signal that we need automation in our daily transaction at the government level. Just this year, the World Bank 
report on doing business with Liberia at 174. So that, that is a challenge for us. So World Bank rated us 174 out of 190 countries best practice in doing business. So to emphasize our government sector aspect is major ongoing challenges. You cannot run taxpayer engagement, taxpayer payment system to have full. You migrated from the old system to the new system, but you are still carrying the old system on in the new system. So taxpayer as taxpayers are struggling in between cities to get a tax payment done. We hope that our international partner will work with our government to synchronize one-stop winnowing system for tax payment. It's a challenge for us. Our recommendation, we have been weighed down by the energy sector, so we look forward to have support from our donors and partners. Second recommendation is to integrate our tax payment, our tax payment system. The third recommendation is to work on legislation because it's a challenge in Liberia that electronic records are not, are not actually permissible in court. So it's a, it's, it's a huge challenge. Our, our international partners should look at law that could help us to, to push e-commerce in Liberia. When you look at our, when you look at Liberia trade data, it's weak in the sense like we do not, there's a dead need for local content. When you walk around Liberia, everyone browsing on their mobile phone are either browsing foreign content. So there's a dead need for local content in Liberia. And our tourism sector needs branding so that we can attract foreign investment. Then when you look at our other sector, we took 12 years to migrate our platform, .gov. If you are IT personnel, you understand what is, the, what is .gov. Putting all government, ministry, agency, and, con and commission to one centralized platform. So the very challenge is like, a government official may decide to use this personal email address. A government ministry may be running a website on a private domain. So the government drafted a .gov platform. It has taken 12 years to materialize. So when you talk about e-commerce, the government should put all those mechanisms into place to have one platform. Because it's, it, it, it is a serious challenge for us to see government employees using private emails and government agency and ministry running their website on private domain. It's a great challenge. The policy is there, so we look forward to the international community to work along with us for us to mitigate this risk. And moving forward, back home in Liberia is a serious challenge for literacy. E-commerce is actually literacy. So we found that some women NGO are helping the market women to handle mobile transactions because for a use aid project, most of our tax payment have been migrated to mobile money. But yesterday, the interaction is very low because of literacy and people are not willing to, to do that. Maybe it's due to culture or behavior system, but we have most of our transaction manually. And the, the government tax payment system is not actually online in the entire 15 counties of Liberia. So, so that's a challenge for us. And where we stop from there. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Doepo. Um, I think it became obvious also what Alessandro said. There's lots of issues that many countries face, similar issues, uh, the energy sector we heard. Um, and especially when it comes to cross-border issues, payment systems. So that's why it's uh, uh, my pleasure now to, to hand over to Mr. Abusi Aku Pakpo. He's director, digital economy for the o o UEMOA Commission. 
And here, I think, lies uh, maybe um, uh, an important task for these regional entities um, to solve cross-border issues um, in a very special way. So, please, you have the word. Uh, merci beaucoup, madame. Thank you, madam chair. Ladies and gentlemen, Waemu is a regional grouping which covers eight countries in Western Africa and all of us uh, speak French. That's our strong point, and this helps us to work together. And within the Waemu Commission, we have two departments responsible for working on these topics, the management of foreign trade, and of course, uh, the Digital Economy Commission, and I chair that commission, so I represent both uh, strands of work here more specifically in the field of electronic trade, e-commerce. We have, for example, organized in October of this year a regional conference which brought together all eight countries with the assistance of UNCTAD. <coughs> and substantial recommendations resulted from this conference. And I heard some of them echoed here by Alessandro and my neighbors who spoke before me refer to them as well, the need to elaborate a strategy for e-commerce, the need to have uh, ICT infrastructure tailored to the task at hand, and a minor comment here, we must be able to develop services as a result of the availability of the network. One shouldn't always uh, develop uh, services uh, on the 4G networks which are not always available everywhere, especially not in rural areas. Now logistics and uh, logistical support and so forth. Now we had the UPU at this conference, the Universal Postal Union and the postal authorities of the sub-region. Now payment solutions, we have a payment solution, mobile cash, mobile money. It's quite widespread in our region. The need to review the regulatory and legal framework at a regional level, the development of capacities and capabilities in terms of e-commerce is something which is lacking in our sub-region. And, and this, we said this earlier, access to financing solutions were proposed to use uh, the Universal Service Fund Universal Telecommunication Service Fund to either create uh, a support fund or a uh, trust fund for ISPs and mobile operators. I believe that my colleague, if this is done, will be very happy and he will applaud this. Similarly, the group of ambassadors or the member states of uh, Wemo in Geneva made a recommendation in a number of and the ministers responsible for commerce met in November of this year in Abidjan and they reconfirmed the need to integrate the group of friends for electronic commerce to provide contributions to the debate and to raise value in terms of the specificities of various countries. This is very important for us as well. They called upon states to identify the points relating to e-commerce and the challenges that exist. They invited the Commission to finalize the plan of action for the development of e-commerce. We should highlight the fact that UNCDAD, with the financing, we're grateful for it, for the rapid assessments for Burkina Faso, Senegal, etc. But these assessments will be done for Niger, Mali, and of, over the next few months, the contribution of UNWA requires these assessments in order to prepare a plan for action at regional level and to set up a regulatory framework that is adapted to its needs. The Commission has also collaborated with the Alliance for E-Commerce. A dematerialization of the origin certificates for liberalization of trade in our area with a pilot study in Senegal between Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire, which is due to take place for all of the documents relating to trade for all commerce. So, grosso modo, 
In terms of the e-commerce, the Commission is going to set up a study to see what are the uses, digital uses, that can be found in our nation states, and this should have a community test. We have not yet um, influence over the private enterprises, but over government enterprises, so states will be obliged to provide all services electronically to their citizens. And now you ask, for example, for a residence certificate, you can go to the committee headquarters about three or four times. We will give the possibility to citizens to have their documentation electronically and to pay electronically as well, and to have the service delivered wherever they wish, either at their home or elsewhere. And for all services offered by the civil service, we, the citizen should only have to move once to, for a digital fingerprint, for example, and that will facilitate the use of e-commerce, of digitalization for citizens, and will have an effect on the private sector as well, because we wish to encourage member states to use an open platform where all citizens are able to deposit their digital solution to provide services to citizens. And we think that with this, we will be able to have an important influence on the use and the development of the services, development of services, because in this study, we're looking at the feasibility of setting up a fund, as was suggested, for development of digital services. So the Commission would like to have any assistance that could be provided, and we hope that this will be concluded, the study will be concluded by 2020 and mobilize civil society by then and journalists to promote this and to provide communication on all of the activities that any member state might take in that area so that we can incite other member states to do the same. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. We're open for any questions. Thank you. Merci bien, Monsieur Pac Thank you so much. That was indeed very interesting, your example. Um, we are moving on to the last group of uh, interventions. And uh, I think there are two interventions that are very in interesting and important because they come from the private sector. And I think throughout the day we've acknowledged and we've heard and seen that the private sector really plays an important role in implementing e-commerce because, let's face it, they're the ones that trade, they're the ones that deal with um, compliance issues, with electronic issues, with border, cross-border issues, with payment issues, most of the time every day. So I'm very happy to have two representatives here from the private sector. And so I would like to give the floor to Mr. Simunsa Moyangana. He's co-founder and director of Bongo Hive. It's an incubator. And I think different other projects, but you will enlighten us. He's from Zambia. You have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. And um, it's... Uh, Pleasure to have this conversation with uh, such a high level set of delegates, uh, given that we are not used to being in forums like this, given uh, especially because we tend to be the people who are down underground facing the call and, and working hard at it, as you have uh, especially said. It was interesting to read the UNCTAD assessment of Zambia, which we participated in, and to learn a lot about the activity that is actually uh, going on. And would like to commend our government for making some traction with regards to um, uh, steps it has taken towards uh, supporting the build of infrastructure um, within the country that allows for communication to take place. And uh, now that we're in a phase where um, financial inclusion, uh, conversations around financial inclusion starts to help us to allow um, a key factor which has to take place when trade takes place to, to, uh, to, uh, to be put in place. I think. A key thing for customers is always to ask, customers um, unknowingly always ask themselves, ask themselves the question, uh, don't make it hard for me to pay you when you're selling them a service. And I think that uh, payment systems uh, get falling into place at the correct time and in the correct place is something that is a very, very important thing to take place. At the stage that Zambia is at, 
with uh, conversations around mobile money, digital banking, and all of these other things falling in place, interoperability then starts to become a key conversation within how do we make it easier for people to, regardless of which bank they're with, which mobile money platform they're using, which, uh, which other intervention they're using, to make a payment for any service that they have to use. I would also like to talk about three things, and allow me to break it down into three points, which are market opportunities, um, skills development, and uh, financing, which are areas that we tend to work in with regards to uh, supporting entrepreneurs as an incubator. And with regards to, to market opportunity, uh, Zambia has a Gini coefficient of uh, 55%, which means that the distribution of income uh, across the country has a, has a wide gap. And that means that if you're going to develop uh, platforms like e-commerce platforms or other trade platforms, um, you're looking at, uh, I think, they're normally in the conversation we normally have is we refer to our populations as pyramids, as in the high net worth individuals at the top, and we, we draw a nice triangle that shows uh, the bottom of the pyramid being with them. But unfortunately, it's really not shaped like that. Uh, it's shaped like an upside down T in that you've got a very thin high net worth um, set of individuals at the top, and a, a, a smaller middle-income class, and then a very wide uh, low-income class. This means that when you start to develop business models, um, the opportunity we believe now is that the, the, what, what we should be exploring is how do we develop business models that address the bot what you would normally call the bottom of the pyramid, where the wider set of where we can make the wider set of um, provide the wider set of advantages towards people there not only towards uh, providing needs, as in providing solar or providing water or providing um, needs, but also appealing to their, uh, to their aspirations and helping them move ahead in life uh, and providing solutions that, uh, providing solutions that help them to be able to do so, but also solutions that help them to trade because that's where the widest market is. And by, by, taking, by providing solutions in that area, we think entrepreneurs will be moving on. So in the same way that you get an Elon Musk getting uh, the, the courage to decide that he wants to do things like moving to Mars, we need to find the courage to address uh, the, 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 uh, the majority of our populations by providing new business solutions that, that help them to move forward and move the economy uh, thus forward. And hopefully we'll have a wider basket of money that stays within the country and build, develops new solutions and new businesses going, going forward. But to be able to do this, we need to address, of course, many things that you've mentioned like logistics, payments, um, information that helps people make better decisions, uh, record keeping that allows people to be, uh, allows people in the market to then ac access finance. And when we talk about access to finance, um, if, you, if we're going to use Western uh, methodologies, then we need to accept certain facts that where you, where we normally talk about, when we would normally support entrepreneurs with initial investments from friends, family, and hopefully fools, uh, we, we have to admit that these are non-existent in the markets that we, that we are in. Uh, a comment that we like to make, and we sometimes think that people take it very lightly, is we're supporting, in a lot of our con the countries that we're, we're supporting entrepreneurs who are starting with $100, as opposed to the thousands of dollars that allow people to start startups. And the services we provide help them cut a, a number of the costs that they have towards starting their business. So where in traditional startups would take months to search for a business model uh, and, and hopefully get to something that allows them to get to the next investor that allows them to gain traction, it's, it's, we've seen us take two years to three years to get a business, then finally get to a place where they finally find the market opportunity and the traction that they need to then attract the finest that helps them to go forward. But we also have to invest in skills development, whether it's the software developers that have to build uh, the solutions, whether it's the data science that needs to be able to read the data and access the data that has been collected over years within the different institutions and infrastructure provided, whether it's the central bank, the regulators, uh, and other institutions that, ha that have for years collected data and might be willing to open it up, the, the central statistics organizations, so on. But we need a new skill of, of, of data scientists that I so currently at Bongo Hive, we do provide a class like that once a year through, through, an, through an initiative that is supported in a number of countries, uh, through, uh, supported by the Master Count Foundation to support data scientists to come out um, of them. And we also have to, as people are trialing out these models, we also have to look at human-centered design so that correct, uh, a correct read of these solutions, especially in new markets, um, helps us to provide 
good interaction, good UX, and, 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 and other opportunities for people to actually put these things into place and so that these solutions are actually as effective as they should be as they, as, 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 as they go out into the market. Finally, I'm going to go back to financing. How do we set a policy that supports new, how do we set a policy that supports new infrastructure, new sets of institutions like angel investments to start to take place within it? Not only talking about setting up a policy, but also to educate high net worth individuals within the country to understand what angel investment is and how to make angel investment possible within the country so that you have money circulating within the economy and growing within the economy when success happens. Um, also, when you talk about the different hubs across, not only just in Zambia, but across the continent, is how do you build the capacity within them to also um, uh, leverage the opportunity to also uh, invest in companies like that and build up the capacity to become uh, fund managers so that they also have a way of sustaining themselves as, as hubs uh, going forward. A number of them are supported by, uh, by, by the by the philanthropy of uh, donor organizations, but then we also need to build up a capacity to continue to, to exist the long, the long miles ahead uh, with regards to whether we'll exist in the future or not in supporting uh, the solutions that are going to come out, uh, that are going to continue to come out. Uh, I'm going to end here, and I hope that uh, Discuss, having discussions around things like this, including cross-border trade. In Zambia, for example, we set up the Southern, uh, in Zambia, Malawi, and Zimbabwe, we set up, for example, the Southern Africa Venture Partnership, which allows us to uh, uh, explore the opportunity to support ventures that are going to come out of Zambia, Malawi, and Zimbabwe, growing into countries, uh, into each other's countries, and, and looking at can we understand policy within SADC, Comesa, or, or, or other uh, trade unions that allow us to then allow digital, digital, uh, operators to then get into, into, this, into, into, into new countries and new spaces and expansion and, and, and scale out. But uh, I hope that uh, our contributions in these conversations open up new opportunities for conversations as to what we can do with support from the private sector and actual growth in the private sector to actually make this happen, to support new businesses into not only growing, but to also making sure that we are taking the wider portion of our country forward uh, in enriching their lives, their aspirations, and making the economies actually work within our countries. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I think your contribution already proved that the private sector needs to be on board because uh, if we want to tackle all these challenges uh, and, the and get the opportunities, uh, we will need out-of-the-box thinking. And uh, speaking for myself and government, most of the time we can't do that as good as private sector can. So thank you very much for your contribution. I would like to give you uh, um, a round of applause because uh, Ambassador uh, from Sweden here to Kenya has to leave. Uh, but thank you for being with us. <laughs> Thank you very much. But we have uh, on our input list, last but not least, another private sector um, representative. Uh, before we uh, move on to the audience, I hope you've all prepared uh, uh, your questions. Um, and this is Mr. Mahamadi Ruamba. He's founder and director of SwagPay and Beog. Bioga, oh my God, this is <laughs> Biogo Lab. Okay, that thanks <laughs> from Burkina Faso, um, and we're really uh, uh, anxious to hear from you. You you look like a very young uh, fellow, so I guess you're one of those young entrepreneurs, what uh, some people call the new millennials. And I hope you can enlighten us and uh, give us some out of the box thinking towards all the challenge we have. You. you have the floor. Okay, merci. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I will be speaking in French. Allow me first of all to state this. I'm extremely happy. And the reason is after I've listened to governmental representatives, the study that was carried out has produced the expected results. Governments have understood what their role is. Allow me as well to summarize their role. As far as I'm concerned, I think that the state should be the investor in the sector where, state, where those who might be involved in e-commerce are not ready to go in yet. 
because it's costly in terms of investment. The profitability is not immediate and it's a risk. And I think there are some examples that have been given. The electricity sector and connection, fiber optic, that should link the whole of the country. There's also a second role that they should play for the state, which is to set up an environment that provides trust so that the, those who are willing to go into e-commerce, whether they're merchants or customers, they should be able to do so without concern. And so the state should do everything that they can to provide an enabling environment. And I'd like to take some examples. Some have already been cited here. Identity, the address system, the relevant laws. It should be possible to have a safe environment. The third role, and I will stop there, I think that the state should set a good example. And what example should that be? Facilitator for investment, facilitator for value-added creation for the private sector. And why do I say this? If in my country I want to ask for my birth certificate, my driving license over the internet, the example given of the residence permit, if I can obtain all of this online, it's it won't be difficult to be able to order a hamburger online because even those issues which are capital for me, if I'm able to find them online, then that creates a certain trust. If states understand that these are their roles, the private sector, please, you can be assured, they will jump on the bandwagon. One state has already written out its roadmap and is already updating it because the environment evolves. And the private sector is always, of course, aware of changes. Then there's the implementation of the work to go hand in hand. My predecessor spoke about Senegal. If the state takes to heart its role, the private sector will be very ready to work together hand in hand to better develop the e-commerce sector. But beyond all of this, these are examples. These are from the macro level. But I would like to speak about the micro level. What is within my area of control? And here this afternoon, I'd like to speak about someone who is responsible for three companies. Each of these companies comes into the development of e-commerce. Allow me to first speak to you about Tukumuz, which is an engineering bureau. We have set up a way of paying online and a point of sale. But we don't use Visa cards, we use mobile money. Because very simply, even if you take the example of Côte d'Ivoire or Senegal, which have examples of mobile money, you will see that the companies which get involved in e-commerce there in those countries have payment at the time of delivery, which is quite high, very high, even too high. And clients, even knowing about mobile money, does not pay remotely. They prefer to have their product delivered to them before paying. And the assessment made by Angtad shows that it's a lack of means of payment through a system of third party and trust in that. And that's what we have developed through this means of payment, which we are trying to deploy across Burkina Faso and why not the whole of the West Africa sub-region. I'm also the founder of Biogo Lab. So, Madam Chair, Biogo Lab. Beogo means the future and lab from laboratory, so future laboratory. Beogo Lab is an incubator. We are sponsoring those who are starting up projects in e-commerce. We've just signed up with a partner in Luxembourg, 
During 2019, we're going to identify 19 products for e-commerce and invest the money and develop them so that they are the grains of e-commerce in Burkina Faso. After that, allow me to speak about the third initiative that I've undertaken as an entrepreneur. In the same way that UNCTAD team has brought e-commerce week to Africa for the first time, that's it's now two years that e-commerce WAGA, which is another structure, has created the first salon fair for e-commerce in West Africa. The second session took place just one week ago, from the 29th of November until the 30th of December. And the first year, Côte d'Ivoire was invited as the model country and the it was this time it was Rwanda invited as the role model and beyond these initiatives and these explanations allow me also to make a recommendation given the different positions I hold it gives me a panoramic view and a view that perhaps government wouldn't necessarily have. I would like to evoke two points. There are four countries that were cited in this room as examples. Kenya, through the Secretary General of the Ministry of Commerce, the Trade Ministry, it is a model and the special advisor for the Prime Minister from Madagascar presented Madagascar as an example. But beyond all of this, there's one element that is lacking as far as I'm concerned, and that is sharing experience amongst those countries that would like to reach a certain level. And it's not that they don't know the domain, but to recognize that there are uh, that there are things one doesn't know allows one to go further. So we have this salon in Waga and we invited the first time Côte d'Ivoire and then it was Rwanda the second time. This is a card that I picked up today. The card belongs to the Secretary General, Principal Secretary of the Ministry for Trade in Kenya. And just after the panel, I introduced the subject, inviting Kenya as the guest for 2019 to share their experience with Burkina Faso. And I do dare to hope that, Madam Chair, with the other panelists, you will call upon Kenya to come and share their experience with us next October for the third e-commerce session in Waga. My last point relates to the debate relating to e-commerce. You have noted technologies, blockchain, big data, open data, and all of the other platforms under e-commerce, the debate is too focused on technology at the moment, which means that the first actors, the prime actors, are not in the picture yet. E-commerce is more like an adjective. It's trade that lies at the heart of this. When we will dare to involve the traders or the traders themselves will decide to take up e-commerce, be sure that e-commerce will take off without anybody needing to get involved. And that was the, the case for mobile telephones. Africa wasn't even considered at the beginning. It was the case as well, perhaps, for mobile money. Perhaps we were thinking that Africans would not be able to use it, but you have seen in terms of mobile phone penetration, we have the highest penetration for mobile money as well. We should perhaps review the debate. 
shouldn't it be the traders themselves? It's not a debate about the technology, it's a debate about trade. Thank you. Oui, merci. Uh... Yes, thank you. You have demonstrated in a sterling way that we require African youth to come up with solutions. And I don't know whether you know that we have the Republica conference. It's a conference for startups in Ghana. It'll take place every Friday and Saturday. So perhaps this is something you might be interested in. Okay, now, I know time is almost up, but since we started 15 minutes later, I do want to uh, give you the opportunity. I know it's been a very long afternoon, and you've been uh, listening very intensely to these uh, uh, panelists, and we had a lot of um, uh, very interesting panelists from all different stakeholders, but I do want to give you the possibility to ask questions or give statements uh, that we maybe um, uh, end at quarter uh, past um, uh, six and, and then we pass on and I already see that there are questions, oh there, yes, yes, here we go. Okay, I saw you first, maybe if you just give a short introduction who you are and from which country you come from. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Good, mo good afternoon, rather, to all. My name is Misongo. I am the director for the promotion of e-commerce in Burkina Faso. And as was mentioned, Burkina Faso is one of the countries which has benefited from UNCTAD's assistance when it came to the assessment of its state of preparation for e-commerce. So, for this reason, I would like, just like all my predecessors, or previous speakers rather, to convey my gratitude to UNCTAD for this technical assistance. And I'd also like to seize this opportunity to thank the partners in the E-Trade for All project. So the study has identified progress in terms of e-commerce. It also came up with a number of challenges and a matrix of action to be implemented to ensure that e-commerce flourishes in Burkina Faso. This is important. However, we believe that the assessment of costs compared to needs in terms of e-commerce are a fundamental step. And we share the concerns expressed by His Excellency, the Minister from Uganda. And for this reason, we would like to urge UNCTAD to consider the possibility of expanding its assistance to cover this very important tier, which is the assessment of costs and needs in terms of e-commerce to elaborate bankable projects. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I would like to, due to time, and we, I, I've seen, yes, I see a lot of hands up there. I would like to collect like two to three, or maybe we'll just collect questions. And then I would like if there, I mean, there were now some um, questions also to the panel, give then the panelists the possibility or others to answer. So now, please, in front here. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. I think you ought to expect quite a few questions. We had quite a... I think quite a large panel this afternoon. Um, my question really could be answered by anyone. I was just curious to know for, well, my name is Chennai Mukumba. I work with an organization called the Consumer Unity and Trust Society Cuts. Uh, I'm currently based in Zambia. Um, my question was really to, to anybody. Um, I think with regards to e-commerce, I think there's a lot of discussion around the fact that we need to um, ensure that there's a lot of skills um, you know, that need to be put in place in terms of the population to make sure that we take advantage of e-commerce. Um, but one of the statements that was made earlier, I think it was by uh, Mrs. Songwe, was that we need to make sure that nobody is left behind. Um, so I think between the process of us undertaking skills building, I think that itself can take a number of years. So to what extent are perhaps some of the countries putting in place measures to ensure that nobody is being left behind, at least sort of in the short to medium term, um, particularly given, I think, quite the low development indicators that we have, um, just to make sure that we aren't exacerbating, I think, in some countries what is quite um, a difficult sort of poverty and unemployment situation. Important aspect, e-skills. Over there, and then I'll get to you in the back. Uh, hi, 
I'm Andrew Akelo Omogo. Um, I run a platform called uh, Impact Kenya and uh, our company, Olives Media. Um, I don't have questions. I just have quick recommendations that can I just give, give out quickly because of time. Uh, what I would appeal to UNCTAD is uh, to support or strengthen or lobby for the government to invest heavily in um, digital defense. I think that's very key. Um, rise of, uh, the other point is rise of digital cities around technological institutions. Uh, the United States is known uh, to have risen uh, quickly in their, their digital economy rose quickly because of uh, certain cities or certain villages, technological villages running, uh, rising around uh, institutions. We know Stanford and Palo Alto uh, very well. And now we have uh, 1871 in Washington, D.C. And even in Chicago, we have, uh, we have, I mean, 1776 in Washington, D.C. and 1871 in Chicago. So that could really help a lot. And then there's also the creation of a proper infrastructural framework. Uh, I mean, in some countries in sub-Saharan Africa, we still have internet buffering for a long time. When you go to a browser, you have, uh, so there's not much strong, uh, there's not strong internet in some places. So we need the government to invest heavily in that. So if UNCTAD could help uh, strengthen or ask the governments to do that. And then also governments should create specific uh, funding uh, for, uh, for the development of digital platforms, like funding that will just go specifically towards digital innovation and nothing else. That would also help digit, uh, entrepreneurs that want to get involved in e-commerce to get funding quickly to, start to, to have their startup supported. And then also there's uh, the issue of fair play in the digital market. Uh, you have companies that have already risen, that are already big enough, and then you have small startups that are, are getting started, and you realize that these bigger companies, because of that fear, they might not be able to, 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 to uh, implement the projects they have well, and um, in the end, a project might fail because an individual fears that a company probably like Safaricom or Airtel or all those big companies might be able to uh, clamp down on them and buy their idea or, you know, infringe on their copyright, uh, 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 you know, infringe on the idea. Then there, 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 the other issue is the uh, integration of Africa into the global digital grid. I loved uh, uh, the, the news that Elon Musk was trying to get satellites into space uh, to, to, to make sure that everybody around the world, from that remote village to the biggest city, has the cheapest and fastest internet. So no other place will be seen as remote, and no other, and, and no other place will be seen as, uh, as elite in terms of getting internet, so that everybody can have easy access. To, 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 to internet and easily create their ideas and put out there. Just that. Thank you. Now, I will pick all those on the left side. There was another hand raised. Yes, please, sir, go ahead. Um, good day. Thanks very much for the panelists. Um, I'm Mohamed Ushakonte from Sierra Leone. Indeed, in Sierra Leone, we are making a lot of progress despite we have some challenges. But two things that is really disturbing us. One, people are seeing e-commerce as giving more advantage to bigger sectors rather than the smaller sectors. And two, um, people are afraid that um, e-commerce will create, will, will lose so much jobs rather than creating jobs. So I just want the panelists to help me with that so that we can use that to help our people down there because we are having so many challenges, but we are developing laws and also trying to get this e-commerce going. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Now I'll go to this side. Please, sir, go ahead. We great, the interpreters regret to inform you that interpretation will now be coming to an end. So I can say that we have organized this rencontre. We have learned this morning that trade for all has made a lot of roads. Mais il traite pour all à négliger certains pays, comme le nôtre, la Côte d'Ivoire. Nous avons appris à parler de il traite pour all, et notamment son volet évaluation de la préparation au commerce électronique. Et dans cette dynamique-là, nous avons adressé un courrier à la CUNCED pour bénéficier 
cet appui également. Mais ce soir, nous nous sommes rendus compte que du fait que nous ne soyons pas un PMA, notre requête est restée lettre morte. Et nous relevons le fait que nous sommes l'un des huit pays de lui et moi. Les sept PMA ont bénéficié de cette assistance et le huitième non. Alors que l'honorable délégué de la commission de lui et moi dans son intervention a, a dit qu'ils attendent ces études-là pour élaborer un projet régional. Alors, je ne sais pas s'ils vont élaborer ce projet régional sans l'un des membres. Donc, euh, ce n'est pas une question, mais c'est un plaidoyer. Et là, nous vous interpellons, puisque c'est vous qui présidez la séance, de voir comment les pays non PMA à revenus intermédiaires pourraient bénéficier de cet appui, à l'instar de ce qui s'est fait dans le cadre de la négociation sur l'accord sur la facilitation des échanges. Dans le cadre de l'exercice de, de cet accord, il y a eu ce qu'on appelle évaluation des besoins. Et là, tous les pays ont bénéficié, qu'ils soient PMA ou non PMA, pourvu qu'ils fassent une demande, n'est-ce pas, ils bénéficient de l'évaluation de leurs besoins. Donc nous souhaiterons que le programme qui s'est développé dans le cadre de la facilitation des échanges, n'est-ce pas, soit, n'est-ce pas, repris en ce qui concerne e trade for all. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Yes, thank you. I th oh, there's one more, great. Uh, I just uh, was told that the interpreters, uh, they have the time to, they, they have the right to go home also. So please, uh, I don't know when, when they're going to stop. So if you don't hear anything anymore, um, don't wonder. They have stopped, they have stopped they have stopped. now. I, I, okay, so don't wonder. Uh, maybe we'll just, uh, we have perfect French-English translation here. So, um, and I think this was the last question, and then uh, we will try to answer some more just comments, but some more questions, and I will give the panelists also uh, the possibility maybe uh, to, to, to have sort of uh, one, one or two sentences uh, for the end. So please, sir. Great, thank you so much. I'm so glad to be part of this meeting. Thanks to Ankrad and uh, all the parties involved. So, very quickly, uh, the Continental Free Trade Area is uh, one of the transformative agreements that we have currently, and uh, um, actually, I've, I've actually taken it upon myself to uh, marshal the other young people to understand the opportunities that come with that. But uh, my worry is this. We have serious infrastructural problems here in Africa. Connectivity is a great, great problem. Now, when we speak of e-commerce, e-commerce is about trade, online trade, and moving of goods. So I'm just wondering, as we bring this e-trade subject, or rather the online, um, the e-commerce subject to the people, which one should precede the other? Is it infrastructural development first, and then the e-commerce uh, debate or awareness comes after, so that we, I mean, or what can we do so that all of them can move together? I think maybe anyone can elaborate on that. Thank you. Okay, that was the $1 million question at the end. Um, so, uh, yes, I mean, we have, I guess, lots of challenges we've heard today. Um, I think we can't say one size fits all. Uh, different countries will have to decide what's most important for them and then uh, go on. But uh, let me uh, pass the questions to the panel. One was around, uh, uh, from Cuts also in Zambia, the question of skills. Um, um, I know that, uh, for instance, the German government put uh, on, in the G20 uh, presidency, when we were G20 president about one and a half years ago, the e-skills for girls. Um, and, but I agree, um, um, there's a lot more that needs to be done. Maybe you have some examples from your countries um, of measures uh, that um, um, should be put in place, or maybe you have some practical examples. Then there was the question um, that was also mentioned by the private sector, that uh, investments. I think investments, especially in the e-commerce area, um, the private sector colleague mentioned $100 issues. Uh, um, uh, that's these uh, um, loans at, at a very minimal level that often are important, but uh, I, admit, I have to admit from the German uh, government's uh, standpoint with our implementation banks that we have, they start with one million. So, so we're now at the moment trying to start how do we, um, um, how can we reach these small enterprises, these small entrepreneurs that often 
don't just need uh, some help. Maybe you also have some examples uh, on that. And then the question which also is there, uh, losing jobs. Uh, this is uh, something that often comes when you talk about automation. Um, how do we take the fear from the people that fear that if we do a lot in e-commerce and in the whole um, digitization, what happens with the jobs that are then, then taken over by others? Maybe that uh, could be also something that's questioned. Then um, the last thing, what, what do we do first? Uh, infrastructure is needed, but I think we all know uh, infrastructure needs a long time, broadband, etc. cetera. Um, E-skills is one, what do we do? Do we do it simultaneously if the money's not enough? Um, how do you prioritize as governments what's important for you and how, how do you tackle these issues? Maybe in the same way we did before, I would give you, Minister, uh, Gobe, I will give you the word first for the answering the questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair and colleagues for your questions. First of all, the issues, the issue of skills is unchallenged. Because if you want to go e-commerce, you must be in a position to develop skills. The knowledge we are giving to our people must be up to date with the challenges of the day. Uh, the curriculum, for example, in schools, much of it is outdated and is colonial based. So we must look at uh, a palatable way of imparting skills to the new generation if we are to build a stronger future, such that they are equally competent to compete for business. And that is uh, unchallengeable. We have no way but to emphasize on skills. Then the fear uh, from Sierra Leone that uh, e-commerce, instead of creating jobs, people will lose jobs. You know, in my country there is a saying that uh, if, if you think education is very expensive, you try ignorance. Here, the whole world is going digital and is heading to e-commerce. Now, for you to effectively compete, you must empower and ensure that uh, the jobs will be created by you reducing on the manual approach in doing business. Because if you imported or exported goods without necessarily going manual and you're using e-commerce or e-trade, you are saving, and they would be saving, can also be reinvested to create more jobs. It's a very big challenge. You cannot say that because we are going to lose jobs, therefore we should concentrate and ignore e-commerce. It is the way to go. You know we are liberalizing trade. For example, in Uganda, we have the East African community, we have Comesa. The others are getting digitalized, and for you, you are becoming traditional to say, I'll not do that because people lose jobs. The more you do that, the more jobs will be lost. So the way to go is let's go e-commerce and ensure we effectively compete. We shall have savings which can be reinvested and we enjoy the economies of scale. Lastly, uh, what comes first and last? That is relative for a country. But I would, I would assume that concurrently things must be built together. You are looking at the infrastructure, and you are at the same time educating the people on how to use it. So bit by bit is the best way. You cannot say we shall now create the infrastructure and then later educate. You'll, the infrastructure created will be out of use and will be an economy, economic to the country. So what we need to do is build the infrastructure, train people such that it is exploited to the optimum point. I want to thank you so much for your kind attention and your questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Minister. Richard, please. <laughs> thank you. Since the translators, are, the, the interpreters are not there anymore, let me speak in English. Because I know the francophones are also uh, partly, uh, they, mo they are more versatile than the anglophone in the language. Uh, as far as Madagascar is concerned, we have uh, now a roadmap uh, toward the um, development of the uh, national strategy uh, to uh, develop uh, electronic commerce. 
Uh, although we have in place the, the laws, as I mentioned before, uh, to govern the uh, electronic commerce, uh, you know, we still have to develop that national strategy to make sure that uh, there is a coherence uh, with uh, uh, what we want to do, uh, taking the account uh, where we have started from. Let me also say something on uh, the peer learning, as uh, Mr. Rwamba from uh, Burkina Faso uh, raised, the partage de modèle. I think uh, he's right. Uh, this is very important. Uh, you don't need to be uh, a PMA uh, or a pays intermédiaire to share experiences. Uh, I think we can do that, but uh, the help of the uh, UNCTAD uh, for sure will be very much appreciated uh, in that regard. And so uh, maybe Madagascar will come also to, uh, to Burkina Faso for the third uh, forum. Uh, also on the, the question, or the, the very important question uh, from Burkina Faso regarding the importance of trade, commerce, rather than putting you know, too much attention on technology, uh, I think uh, it goes uh, in parallel. The, the technologies are tools to promote trade. There is no uh, incompatibility. Uh, indeed, um, you have to have something to sell uh, or to buy. If you don't have anything, then uh, even if you have the, the, the highest technology, the, the most sophisticated technology, it's not going to work. You, you don't need uh, to, to go that far. Nobody can't be left, uh, Madame uh, from Zambia. I don't think that uh, nobody shall be left behind in electronic commerce. It's a very open, uh, you know, um, opportunity. Uh, uh, except the fact that if we're not careful, maybe the costs may be, uh, uh, the cost of transactions, costs of, uh, uh, you know, um, of putting in place some measures may be uh, an obstacle. So uh, nobody shall be, uh, you know, nobody will be left behind, in my view. Uh, in the same line, uh, I, I think electronic commerce will create more jobs. Uh, there is a shift, there will be a shift. Instead of just, uh, you know, uh, uh, carrying boxes or stuff like that, it's uh, just going to be more uh, in front of your, uh, your screen. Uh, nevertheless, I think there is one thing which uh, shall be uh, underlined, which is the importance of uh, logistics. Uh, laws, you have to have re regulations, you have to have uh, flexibility in, uh, in terms of payment. Uh, the resources, human resources, you have to be ready for that. But, but there are a lot of investment, we, are talking, we talked about investment in terms of how we are going to move a good from one place, from, from A to B. This is where, you know, some people are saying, well, uh, for pharmaceuticals, for example, we can use drones. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, like in India, for example, they, or uh, other countries in Africa, they are already using drones to move these. Uh, uh, of course, there is the problem of adressage. Uh, but there are technologies for that. I've heard of something like what uh, what three words, I guess. Uh, it's already a technology that is used to put the word, today's word, into 57 million square uh, by three by three. So technologies are there. Uh, we just need to tap into them. Et voilà, donc il faut être sûr de les... Uh, we have to make sure to be uh, ready to tap into these, uh, these great opportunities. Thank uh, you, thank Richard. You. Your English is perfect for a French speaker. Sorry. <laughs> Paul, it's uh, your turn. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. Uh, sorry for guys, I was just speaking French. <clears throat> I'm sure I, my English is clear. <laughs> <coughs> just uh, a brief comment on uh, e-skills. Uh, just to say that uh, in the case of our country, Zambia, the, the curriculum has already been uh, changed and the uh, ICT 
has been introduced as a compulsory course from grade one up to university level. Except, except that uh, for the country to start seeing the benefits of these skills, it might take uh, a time. So uh, ICT is being taught in, in our schools and colleges. Um, I, 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 I heard something. Someone was talking about e-commerce favoring the big guys. But, uh, I think from my own uh, understanding, this is always the nature of business. As a beginner, you can't compete with uh, someone who has been in the business for a long time, longer than yourselves. But what is important is uh, to identify your niche. Where do you join the, where do you join the value chain? so that you, you capitalize and maximize depending on your strengths and, and positioning. I think that is what I could, I could add for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, and just quickly for Cote d'Ivoire, uh, I, um, I would just want to state uh, that maybe you know that uh, for Germany we have the Marshall Plan with Africa, and Cote d'Ivoire is one of six uh, reform partner countries. Um, which uh, has special attention, uh, or will get, is getting special attention from the German government. And I'm sure uh, we can find a possibility to work in this field together, but maybe we can do this later bilaterally. Um, since I don't, uh, I've overstretched time already, and I think you've earned your share of the reception now. Um, and I just want to end on a positive note, because we've talked about so much uh, about uh, the challenges. Um, I, I think that what, what's different in this issue, if you compare it with other development uh, issues in the past, is in one way or another, all countries are in this boat together. In Germany, we have remote areas. They don't have access to internet. It's not like you know, it's the rest of the world is, is, is a great place. And, uh, and it keeps changing. So I think we're in this journey together. Uh, and I think there are many, many solutions here in Africa um, that are Africa-made that are much further than what we have. For instance, the, the number of mobile phones that are used is you have a higher scale than, than in Germany. So yes, obviously solutions in e-payment or others will have to do with mobile banking, with mobile, the use of mobile phones. So there you have to come up with Africa-owned um, ideas uh, and incidents, and, and that's good. Uh, and I, I think this is a good partnership that we're in together. And uh, besides UNCTAD, there are, of course, other uh, international organizations that are out there that help um, implement skill questions that, that are there to implement e-commerce uh, challenges. So um, um, the e-trade for all, or what, what, what were you saying? Yeah, yeah. the e-trade for all, of course, is, is a whole bundle of, of opportunities. So. Um, I think um, um, there are a lot of possibilities, and that's why we're here, to talk together, to be here, to, to come up with solutions and find solutions. And now at the end, I would like to uh, ask you for a, a round of applause um, for, for the panelists that, that have really bared with us through the whole afternoon. Thank you for being here. And now let's have a great evening and network together. Asante sana.